Jays, Rock 30, Bill and Jays Excellent Podcast, with your hosts, Billy Quinton and Jay Odom. Our special guest this evening is Brayden Locke. Let's roll. Hey guys, this is episode 10 of the Rock 30 podcast, Bill and Jay's Excellent Podcast. Uh, my name is Jay Odom. And I'm Billy Quentin, and we are very excited uh, to have our guest with us today. Uh, if you followed Rockwell Yellow Jackets football or college football, it is somebody you know very well and is an integral part of Yellow Jackets football and Yellow Jackets football history. Unfortunately, we couldn't get Jackson Smith and Jigba, so <laughs> we ended up going next route, and we ended up getting Braden Locke. I hope, you know, that's a good positive way to start, oh, right? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I would have <laughs> said the same thing. <laughs> Fourth place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we are very excited to have Braden. Braden is an outstanding uh, guy that uh, is, I was kidding around, but no, he was an integral part of the Rockwall Yellow Jackets uh, history and has a record breaker. We'll go over some of his records that he has, and not only for the Yellow Jackets, but in high school football. Hopefully someday and someday soon he'll have some records in college football as he is the uh, quarterback for the Wisconsin Badgers. And uh, formally at Mississippi State, we're going to talk about all that. And uh, then maybe in a couple years we'll be talking about what pro team you'd like to be on and, and who you might want to have. He'll be too be big great. to come back. He won't be coming back here, Billy. No, so. no, no. <laughs> I tried to get Jackson. I'm not getting any responses. Yeah, so. something happened. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to get responses, but not anymore. But anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, and so we're very excited to have you here. I appreciate you guys. I look forward to it. Yeah. And you're on the are you spring break right now? Spring break. Yeah, okay. sir. It was right. a little bit, a little bit later this year, so. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, it's kind of spread Never out been home more. on Easter, yeah. So There you go. Oh, cool. Yeah, there a, you go. It's been a good part. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start with when you're, you, you, when you were younger, and we're going to start right at the very beginning here. And right. when you're younger, when did you know, okay, this football thing might work out for me? Or I, mean, I know you did all the sports, but when did football start coming to the forefront? Um, I would say, like, I loved <clears throat> it more than anything else as a young kid. I mean, my earliest memories go back to, you know, being in the yard with my dad, throwing the football. Um, you know, I've always had a ball in my hands. Uh, I've kind of always been a natural thrower, per se. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was start, you know, I started playing when I was nine. Um, I played one game as a tight end, and I got, you know, a multitude of holding penalties. And every game after that, I've been the quarterback. Um, so that was, that, was, out, of, that was, was out of necessity they had to move you, right? Okay. Yeah, not not a skill thing. <laughs> like, where are we going to put him? Yeah, yeah exactly. quarterback. I mean, exactly. Dad, Dad's standing right over there. We got to put him somewhere. <laughs> no doubt. So you um, never, even at those early days, you wanted to play. Like, you couldn't wait to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanted to play quarterback. Mm. Um, that's just – I've always gravitated towards that position. Um, I like the I like being in the charge. I like having the ball in my hands. Um, and so I started playing when I was nine. Um, played every year up until that point. You know, when I got in seventh grade, um, it kind of started getting more real for me as far as, like, I knew this is what I loved the most. Um, you know, I started – you know, I um, – I was able to get with like Will Reed at the time, who mm -hmm. was you know another legendary mm -hmm. rock wall quarterback. Um, so he taught me a whole lot. He worked with me multiple summers when I was uh, seventh middle school age, and uh, so that's when it kind of started really you know forming for me. And then through high school, I mean, my freshman year you know went really well, and then sophomore year I was able to step in and, and take over as the starting quarterback and uh, you know kind of the rest is I mean it was easy from there on out as far as a decision f right. to do anything right. I mean I didn't want to do anything else you know that was my you know that was my plan a all the way and uh, you know I was fortunate to have the right people around me to uh, to make those dreams happen and you know here we are so yeah you played multiple sports like a lot of kids mm -hmm. uh, growing up but then I know you were still playing baseball in high school yeah at one point because I remember you were a pitcher of course uh -huh. and uh, because I need you to know that you said well you know I always wanted to play quarterback all of us wanted to play quarterback. Right, right. Yeah. Nobody was like, "Man, I want to be left tackle." I think yeah. I think that's where There's I want to no go. No question. Yeah. So, but all of us don't get the opportunity, or they have the skill to do it like you do. And so, uh, but most of the time, quarterbacks are also pitchers. No know? doubt. And yeah. so, uh, your brother is the same way. Yeah, you know? he is. And then we'll yeah. talk about him here in a little bit. Mm. And but 
Was that a hard decision? Because I know one year uh, you were uh, going to, I think you were going to be on the varsity as mm-hmm. the pitcher. And I was like, all right, we get to see Braden on the mound and all that. And you had decided, no, I got to go football only. What was a part of that decision? Um, I think it, it was just kind of an, a, uh, you know, I knew that at that point I hadn't, I knew what I was going to do in college. And I, you know, I loved baseball, but the uh, the grind of it was a lot harder for me. Like in football, I love practice. I love going out there. I love competing with guys. Um, you know, it just all of that stuff always came really naturally for me. And in baseball, like to go out there and practice four times a week, and you know, you got to hit all the time, and you got to throw your bullpen, and you got to, um, you know, you got to do all the things that you got to do to maintain you know, the level, because, and it really, like, it had a little bit to do with the fact that I'm in Rockwall, like, it is very competitive to yes. play here at yes. Rockwall, yeah. and, you know, me putting all of my time into football, you know, I wasn't going to be what I wanted to be in baseball, you know, and I, and I, no doubt I could pitch, you know, off of some natural ability, but um, I never felt like I was going to get the most out of myself in that sport, and so, and ultimately, I knew that it was going to come to an end in a couple of years in high school when it was over. And so, you know, for me, it just came down to I knew what I wanted to do in college, and I wanted to put my full self into it. And uh, so, yeah, that's the decision mm-hmm. that I made. Uh, yeah, it was my sophomore year because okay. um, I, yeah, I was going to be, you know, hopefully in a in a pitching role on mm-hmm. the baseball team, and um, which is a very good baseball team too. There's no question. It wasn't like you were just going to walk in there. And, no, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. So and that's that kind of the point I'm trying to make yeah. is. You know, like those guys are, you know, really good at what they do. We've got really good players and a really good staff in baseball. And, um, you know, like I said, I just I didn't feel like it was worth it to give half of myself sure. to it. So we were talking about that with the coaches a couple of weeks ago. Like, mm-hmm. you can be an excellent baseball player in Rockwall or Heath and mm-hmm. not get to play. No question. Crazy. Yeah. Damn. I mean, there's a lot of guys that I knew uh, growing up that they wouldn't not play significant time for the baseball team. And then in the summer, they were you know, really good players yes. on really good teams, but it just didn't work out during the baseball season because there's only nine spots, you know. So. Yeah. And you think about it, too, a lot of these guys that don't get a lot of playing time on the high school team are still getting scholarships because they're getting scholarships through their summer leagues and things oh, like wow. that. They're no playing question. so well yeah. there wow. that they'll get a scholarship offer yeah. uh, because of how – but yet they're still not able to play a lot mm-hmm. in Rockwall or Heath, you know, both schools God, are the same yeah, way. It's unbelievable so, in this yeah. town. yeah. Uh, okay, so let's go back. Let's talk about your family real quick. Your dad, uh, Trey, and your mom, Ashley. Oh, yeah. Uh, Trey played sports in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, he, he played football. Okay. North, North Mesquite. Okay. Center. North Mesquite. North Mesquite. Center. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if I know Trey, he's like, nothing happened until I touched the ball and I got the play started. There you it, go. it isn't the quarterback. <laughs> it's not the running back. It is the center. Still remind you. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, no, he's a, he's a really good athlete. I got to play basketball a number of times with Trey. He's a good athlete and stuff. Yeah. What about mom? Did mom, mom, Ashley, did she um, play? So I think she played volleyball okay. early in high school okay. and then gave it up. Um, but yeah, I think that was about the extent of it. And they met in high school. Right? They met in elementary school. Oh, wow. Whoa. And then went to middle school together, high school, and then that's had great. Me, so. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That is great. It is a and unique story. It is, they grew up in Mesquite. Mesquite, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. If somebody didn't grow up in Rockwall that plays on these teams, there's a very good chance it's then Mesquite. Yep. Mm. It's always Mesquite Rockwall. You hear that a lot. Might throw in a Forney now and then, oh, yeah. or a, maybe a Royce City, but it's always. You know, Jacory. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I saw him the other day. He was over oh, the did you? the other day. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, so let's. So dad and mom were at North Mesquite. Mm-hmm. Did you ever ask them about the most confusing mascot? The Lady Stallion. The Lady Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most I confusing. The Lady I have not yeah. asked, but I've put that together. They're before. the stallions, <laughs> but the girls are the Lady Stallions, which doesn't make sense. Well, I guess in this day and it age, it is twenty twenty four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you better watch yourself. Exactly. So. <laughs> I guess that's better than the mayors. Right. The, the old right. mayors. I don't know. <laughs> Um, so, would you rather be a lady stallion or a uh, what was Ratcliffe's? Oh, uh, terriers. The terriers. The terriers. Yeah. <laughs> and they weren't even like the fighting terriers. They were just, just the terriers. terriers. They're not even a tr- uh, you know uh, tr- ferocious. I couldn't get the word out. But it was they, the graphic. It was. The it was cute a cute little. little yeah. you didn't no teeth. No. I yeah. will say North Mesquite's logo is pretty cool. They got the stallion up on the hind legs, no and doubt. it looks really cool and all that. And boy, North Mesquite back in the day. When did your dad graduate? Do you remember? Class of 04. 04. So it was just before that they won. They were in state. They went to state, right? Well, Mesquite won in two thousand one. That's right. And then, but uh, North Mesquite was always in the hunt in the yeah. 90s. I think that, yeah, the 90s, they were really good. Yeah. Elam was there. Yes, that's um, right. Coach that's Elam. Right. 
Yep. Yeah. And so they so, had some they had some really good years. But that's the thing you always get too is all these people. I got David Sweet, Terry Gregory, and Steve Glenn. They're the owners of Sportsgram. Constantly mesquite stuff when we're off the air. You can't oh, get man, away from you it. You can't yeah. get away from it. It is just a nightmare. Uh, okay, so mom and dad. Now you have a brother and a sister. Mm-hmm. They're twins. Twins. That's oh, right. Nope. Yep. <clears throat> and so, and we're going to go over something here real quick. And Jay, if you could get this ready, it's Landon. Mm-hmm. And Ash and uh, uh, Ashley Landry. Right? Uh, I mean Landry. Sorry, well, I, I think Ashley's Ashley. my mom. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you have uh, Braden at the yes. top, and that's how you spell it: B R A E D Y N. That's correct. But as you look to the right, that's uh, that's a weird spelling to where it starts out. Okay, uh, there's you not a lot of Braden spelled that way, and you no probably doubt. never have spelled right. I have until... never met another Braden spelled that way until this following this past football season. There is one on our team named Braden and spelt the same way. Okay. Really? Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I corrected it for you if you look to your oh, right, I, and I we moved much the better. Y and the E. Okay. Make you understand it a little bit better. Well, right. that makes I sense. Understand. Now we're yeah. fine. Yeah. Now we go to Landon. L A N D Y N. Okay. I don't see Landon spelled that way often. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. Okay. No. So and then you have uh, Landry, which is L A N D R E E. Am I right? That's, That's correct. Okay. So if you take the way they're spelled. And then I just did a few switches here where if Landon would just give uh, Landry his Y. Mm-hmm. And, and they then could trade Landry, her e. Yeah, then she can give him the E. <laughs> then things are all better. And I don't understand. I'm assuming it's your mom, Ashley, that made this decision. I know oh, Trey I was not a part you. of yeah. this. But Ashley yeah. <laughs> is spelled correctly. His mom She's got is spelled the, the regular way. Yes. My mom's so, is L-E-Y. L-E-Y. Yeah. So I guess I'm just confused as were y'all not... Were you poor and could not afford the right letters? Was that what's going on? Uh, what was happening You know, you here? can only purchase so many on the birth certificate. Right, exactly. And I guess, but I mean, it's still the same spacing. So I guess this is more of when we have Ashley on the podcast at some point. We need to, you know. You'll have to run that by. We'll, into the we'll issues. figure it, I think she yeah, just likes being different. Well, and the funny part is she will tell you that she named Landry after Tom Landry. Right. Oh, right. But it's not spelled it's not like spelled Tom Landry. Same, right? I'm like, that doesn't make any <laughs> She just sense. had to be unique. Yeah, there's no doubt. Spin she on had it, to be, yeah. Which, how much uh, big respect that you named your daughter after Tom Landry. That's, that's huge. That's a fan. That's outstanding. That is pretty cool. Now, do we know where Landon came from? Um, she'll tell you it was from some TV or some movie that she watched. Uh-huh. I can't remember. Okay. The whole. It's, then, I think it's a movie. And is there a story about uh, your name? Was, or did she just like it? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. So you know about the brothers and sisters that you still know about your name? No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just wanted to clear that up for all of America right. because I know that I know that when I do these ball games now, uh, Landry, um, does she do any sports? I know she works at. Uh, uh, the restaurant is Zanata, right? She's she did work at, as Zanata. Okay. Now she's oh, working at Standard Service. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. But I, it was always nice to see Landry at, uh, at mm-hmm. Zanata. But uh, now, does she do any sports? Uh, she did volleyball for a little bit mm-hmm. and then gave it up uh, her freshman year, okay. a couple years back. Um, and now, yeah, just kind of – she's she's big into, like, the student council thing. I think she's going to run for uh, class president next year mm-hmm. and – um, yeah, kind of finding her way, yeah, you know, and that kind of yeah, stuff. That's great. Uh, and then uh, let's quickly talk about your younger brother Landon, mm-hmm. who's following your footsteps. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only uh, in high school, he is the uh, now he will be the uh, assuming the starting quarterback for Rockwall uh, this upcoming season. Mm-hmm. He split time with uh, Mason uh, right. Marshall uh, last year. Both are outstanding. That's a tough job for Coach Brooks. Is no he's got question. two outstanding yeah. kids playing. Yeah. I've, Mason was a senior yeah. at that time, and I've like I've <clears throat> told Landon and told pretty much anybody that I've been able to talk to about it. Like I truly don't believe that I would have done well in that situation. I was going like, to ask you about that because I, you know, as the quarterback, you're so uh, mentally trained that like you are the leader of the team, you are the face of the program, you are in charge, and when you're out there, it's your show, and you know. You have to put down your pride a little bit and <clears throat> understand that there's a greater good. And, you know, and I think that Coach Brooks does such a phenomenal job of of instilling that uh, mentality into not just the quarterbacks, but the program in general. You know, we talk about Jackie Fight Never Dies and all this stuff, but that to me is living it out. Like you like that that goes deep in our program and um you know, like I said, I don't know how well I would have done if he would have came to me and said, like, oh, yeah, you're going to play 50% of the mm-hmm. season. Like, you know, I just – it would have been really hard for me. Yeah, well, and um, I would imagine that. And, and I was I asked Coach Brooks about this or even Coach Webb at times about that because 
they both held it, uh, from my viewpoint, very well. Mm-hmm. You know, it seemed like it went. Yeah, they rooted well. on for each other. Yeah, like, yeah. exactly. That's pretty cool. And so, but what would happen would be now and then, if one hand was hot, Coach Brooks would stay with mm-hmm. whoever had the hot hand. And right. I think it worked both ways there this season. Uh, would you, if you're in that position, and I never ask either one of the, uh, you know, Mason or Landon, because I think it'd put him on the spot, but if you know you're getting your opportunity, but you're not going to get it next time, aren't you forcing things at times to try That's to make... That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. when you're on the field, it's like, well, screw it. Like, I'm not yeah. going to be out here next series. Like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> threading it in there, yeah, you know? Like, exactly. Because you're um, not going to go in there and hand it off three times and say, okay, yeah, I did my job. Yeah, and, and then run off the field. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> right. if it gets to third down, like, no, I'm throwing <laughs> it's it. It's third and inches. <laughs> We're going deep. Nine routes, everybody. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Um. But uh, so let's talk a little bit about now Landon is uh, your uh, obviously your younger brother. Mm-hmm. He is now going the route that you chose not to. He is playing both football and baseball. Yeah. In fact, tonight we're, we're, we filmed this on Thursday. I know Jay likes to have the illusion that we're doing this on Saturday, but uh, this is live. This is live. Live <laughs> in front of a studio audience. Yeah, uh, right. But um, but he will be pitching tonight, and mm-hmm. he has done exceptionally well in baseball too. Yeah, I mean it's it's really impressive. You know, I a few minutes ago talked about how I didn't have I didn't want to put the time into baseball and I didn't, you know, he he does. I mean, he he in the morning he goes and does <clears throat> works out with the football team and in the afternoon he's with the baseball team and you know, you know, a, re- a regular day for him is is 14 hours long and like I mean it's it's unbelievable. I mean, mm-hmm. the time that he puts into both sports to excel at both sports um I'm super impressed with it. I think he's got, you know, as good a work ethic as, as I've ever seen from a high school kid. Um, you know, I think that, you know, doing that, doing things like that in high school will only set him up for success in right. college. And, you know, let alone from the fact that it's just fun to watch. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you get to, it is. I got up this morning, I got to go see him <laughs> throw uh, to the receivers. And tonight I get to go watch him pitch <laughs> in a district game. Like, I mean, <laughs> so it's the pretty gene, awesome for the me. The genes in this family. I know, I know. And we're not talking Levi's. We're talking, yeah. <laughs> what percent would you say has been the hard work? Did was your dad always instilling that hard work and the talent that's there? Yeah, too? it was. It was both of my parents. Um, you know, my they were both hard on us growing up. From an from a you know hard on us from a uh, perspective of like, you know, they didn't let the circumstances dictate. Like, like they never felt bad for us. They never made excuses for us. And I, you know, mm-hmm. and that. I think that's something that a lot of people talk about, but it doesn't necessarily get uh, lived out all that much. And, uh, you know, for them, like, <clears throat> they really instilled, like, you know, if you don't like your circumstances, then it's on you to change them. Like, you are in control of your life and, mm-hmm. and what you do with it and what you make of it. And uh, so, yeah, I think that they really drilled home that kind of thing. And they always gave us, like, you know, I think you see so many overbearing dads in today's yes. age. And, you know, one thing what? that I can say, <laughs> one thing that I can say about my dad is like, it was never about, you know, well, you know, you don't want to play baseball anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you've always played baseball. Like you, you know, never, he felt never pushed. made it about himself or made it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. never pushed me to do anything. Like it was like, well, what do you love and what do you want to do and what, what motivates you do that? You know? That's and cool. so, um, you know, I, I really attribute a lot of, of, uh, mine and Landon's work ethic just to my dad always kind of instilling those things and my mom too but um you know I think they did a phenomenal job on that kind of stuff so how does your brother so he knows you're out there playing college ball in a big way is the pressure on him do you think I don't know if it's I don't know if the pressure's on him you know I mean I don't walk the halls with him every day so yeah I'm curious as to what he would say to that (laughs) but I you know if you've met him like he wa- he moves to the beat of his own drum. Yeah. Like he's his own guy, and he really like he is he is stuck in his ways, and he's very like stubborn in what he believes. And so, um, I don't really think that he aspires to be a lot like me in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> I know it looks that way because you know he's, he's d- yeah. going on to play football with at Wisconsin and, mm-hmm. and all that. But um, you know, like I said, he is very much his own person, and you know he wants to he wait. Wants so to do I missed his that. Thing. Yeah, I was going to on to Wisconsin. Your yeah, brother? he's committed there. I did not know this. So mm-hmm. it's in the notes I see you, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, I, I read those so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> I sent them about twenty minutes ago. <laughs> that's right. So that's crazy. So you're mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. I'm sure you were going to get to that. I was. That's where I was going to go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then, then Jay took my steam. But okay, uh, no. He said it. I know. <laughs> 
Well, we can't blame the guest. I have That's to blame right. you. It's my fault. <laughs> no, but you're, and I'm glad you brought it up because he has committed to Wisconsin. He's mm-hmm. a senior this year, but he committed verbally. And we're talking verbally. You know, it's different than Everything, signing yeah. the dotted line. You can't do it uh, yet. December. Yeah, right. And so uh, did that surprise you that he wanted to go to Wisconsin? A little bit. Um, and it was very early on in his recruitment, which was also surprising. Um you know, he committed last summer, which was prior to any starting experience mm-hmm. on the football mm-hmm. field. And, um, you know, also like, you know, I've told you, I was telling you guys, like he is his own person in so many ways. And he is not, um, he is not really swayed by the external and what maybe people are telling him. He is always going to do what he believes is right. Good. And uh, so when he came out and was like, you know, dead set on committing to Wisconsin and going there, it was surprising to me because I just figured, like, he's never been me and he's not going to want to do what I do, so he's probably going to do his own thing. You know, maybe he'll stay close to home or maybe he'll, uh, you know, maybe he'll go in another direction and play in another conference or want to be around different coaches mm-hmm. or, you know, just gravitate towards something different than I did. And, you know, when he told the news to the family that he wanted to play there, I mean, I was I was hyped up. Like yeah, it was that's awesome. That's so, so cool. um, yeah, it was it was it was a really cool moment. And you know, assuming everything continues to go right, like you know, it's going to be a really fun few years for us. Yeah, and, we're, we're talking about his childhood a little bit. Let's show a couple pictures that we got and and ask some questions. I have a lot yeah. of questions here. Okay, and so, start. yeah. No, okay, you go. scrappers. Play, yeah. Well, it looks like the crappers is what <laughs> yeah, it looks like. You play for the Texas I crappers. Have untucked that yeah. shirt a yeah. little more. <laughs> so this on. is back when you were going to be a all star pitcher at some point. Yes. And everything. So how old are you here? I believe seven. Okay, yeah. you're seven. You're like that roll. wallpaper back there. I was going to say. That's <laughs> yes. where I wanted to go. Yeah. The best thing you can do for a photograph is have something super busy behind them, <laughs> yeah. and then back them up against that wall. That's what <laughs> well, you want to like, do. And of course, want... the AC thing. Yeah. Oh, yes. exactly. Very nice thermostat. <laughs> you didn't have time to Photoshop this, like no, no. Yeah, man. If I did, there'd been so much more different stuff. But uh, I love. I do like the logo, though. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, now this is good stuff. In a suit. <laughs> I oh, have yeah. gotten word from my sources, your mom, yep. that you went through a suit stage. Very you, much so. Okay, so explain that. Everywhere. Like everywhere you wore it everywhere. Yeah. I mean, is that a clip-on or is that legit? It's a clip-on, okay. but I should have said it was legit. Well, I still wear clip-on. Uh, I wear <laughs> clip-on <laughs> still if I have. I will edit it and just say, say it's legit. It's, That's a legit tie. There you yeah. go. That's pretty there we cool. go. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I I just I wanted to, I wanted to look, you know, what, and, look, what I want to look my best. And so you remember these days. I do. I do remember. I remember the suit. Um, I remember wanting to wear it everywhere. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Did you only have one? I believe so. Okay. So All a right. lot of laundry. <laughs> a lot of laundry. A lot of dry um, cleaning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and, and it's funny because... I don't know how much you guys have talked to the sources, but I still care <laughs> well, very much. I care very much about my look and my, you know, what I wear and what I do. And, You're doing a great job of segues. Um, Let me just tell you that. I'm right sure now. I am. Yeah. But, uh, you know, no surprise. So <laughs> I think I was this, probably four in that. If I do you think this was like Christmas morning? You're all dressed up, ready? Oh, yeah, maybe. The... It could have just been a random Tuesday, though. <laughs> right. There's no <laughs> doubt. Don't like, know. It could have been any day. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then, okay, yeah, what try to explain is... this. Okay. <laughs> okay. There's. I don't think there is an explanation. That yeah, you can make not to much. Make us... There's a lot of jokes there. So who do, but... we have here? who do we have here? This is. So those are my two best friends from childhood, Jack Consulman in the middle, who had not hit puberty yet. Clearly, <laughs> we're all the same age. Let me ask we this. are the same age. <laughs> right, let me ask you this: Has Jack yet hit puberty? Because I worry. I think about he's got it. some hair under his arms. <laughs> okay. All right. I think okay. He's got some, uh, I like how his banana thing is dra- right. dragging on the ground. It's dragging. Right. <laughs> um. So that is. Well, my, I like the... how you've. You've added the lines to yeah, make your little I've got more some detail going on. So you were on. always that's, into the appearance details, right? right so. And uh, that's why he would go into graphic design. He knew that the the peel would be more appealing. No question. Yeah. Well, yeah. Without that, I don't know if I would have guessed banana on the other two. Yeah. Right. You know, so that, so right. what 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 inspired y'all to? Okay, so if I'm remembering correctly, <clears throat> Jack was going as banana. And which is no surprise for what like Halloween? Just yeah, but yes. As You're making it sound like a regular Tuesday. No, again. no, no, no. no. <laughs> this was for Halloween. We outgrew the. Okay. Every, this wasn't an everyday okay. stage. Um, but Jack was going as a banana for Halloween, and uh, <laughs> I guess we decided that we were all going to go as the same thing. So <laughs> that's good. Um, Let me just give you this bit of advice, and I think you've already taken it, but. Uh, 
don't ever follow Jack and doing whatever he's doing. I think yeah, that's just that, a horrible plan. A lot of the things that I got in trouble for growing up, yeah, that yeah. what it stemmed from. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't let Jack be your leader. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So okay. a lot of these kids you grew up in ele- with in elementary school, they're still still your buddies now? Oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm actually, Jack came in town last night, and I think we're getting together today. And Yeah, between Jack and Kaden, those were my main two best friends, and uh, they... Um, yeah, we still talk every single week. You know, we're you know definitely every week. Sometimes you know every day. So so I'm gonna say um, from the look of that picture, he is not playing college ball. Is that no? Fair? Jack Jack <laughs> is okay. he's living the frat guy life. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect for Jack. He seems to be enjoying his life. Yeah, <laughs> not the, I think Jack has a question. Am I right? I bl- he let's see what he uh, Jack does yeah. have a question Very here. Nice. Do you know about this? I know he's gonna ask something, okay. but uh, so he grew. Yeah, he has. He's yeah. grown up. He's like four or six now. All right, let's see what he, hear what he has to say. <laughs> hey, Braden, why'd you always walk this bike instead of riding it when we were kids? I don't think it's because the chain was broke for four years. <laughs> oh, man. Explain Just why you walk the bike and never. The bus. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Where the broken chain so, is. That what he's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I think it's kind of funny that that bike that is technically mine is still at Jack's house. And uh, I thought he went to your we've house. We've been driving for four years, and you know and yeah. the bike is still there. So <laughs> if that tells you anything, but no. So when I moved to Rockwall, um, I was nine, and um, uh, I didn't know how to ride a bike. Wow. And apparently, when you're nine. You're, and you live in Rockwall, you're supposed to be able to know how to do that. Well, uh, I think just any American kid <laughs> at, by nine, you should be riding the bike. We're, we're not, so, not, not all athletic at that so, point. But it, was <laughs> just, it was one of those, like, I had never even thought about it, riding a bike. And then I get here and, like, you know, I get these two friends, Jack and Caden, and they go everywhere on their bikes. Right. And That's I'm what like, we did. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I'll be there in 30 minutes when I walk there, you know. <laughs> and so. And uh, like, you're walking. And so. I tell my dad, I'm like, Dad, I need like I need a bike. Like all these kids have bikes. I need a bike. So they give me a bike and you know, my dad you know, we always learn through uh through failure. A sure, so especially just, bike. So he just sticks me on the bike and it's terrible. <laughs> I'm falling everywhere. I don't know what I'm doing. Um he calls it teaching. Uh-huh. Um so anyways. But that's kind of the way you have to, you didn't do training wheels or anything. It was just no, it get was on just it and like, go. Get on and go. Of yeah. course, at nine, you're, the girls aren't going to be clamoring around you if you have training wheels at right. nine. Right, that yeah. was not an yeah. option. Yeah, <laughs> and with exactly. my dad, that wasn't an option. Right, so, right. so straight to um, it. You got to go straight to it. <laughs> yep. And so, so I'd tell him, I'm like, I got a bike now. Like, sweet. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm I'm back in the cool kids club with sure. the bikes. Yeah, it and, sounds uh, like it. So then I, yes. but. I did. I was so bad, and like every time that I would get on it, I would fall and I'd hurt myself, and and I'm showing up like I got a bloody knee, and I'm like, this is just not worth it. So then I decide, the best thing to do, of course, is I'm gonna just walk this bike everywhere. <laughs> I need to make my walk so, a little more difficult. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just gonna show up as if I have a bike, but yeah. I'm just gonna walk the yeah. bike. Yeah. So that they don't know, but yeah. like. You just, just kind of like you stopped riding just a few feet exactly, ago. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, then it got okay. <clears throat> so <laughs> every time I would show up, I was walking the bike, right. and, or you know, we would go, we would play football or wiffle ball or whatever at Emerald Bay Park, and then Caden lived right up the hill from there, and Jack lived just down the street from there, mm-hmm. and so you know we'd be done playing and be like, all right, let's go to Caden's house, or let's go to Jack's house, or let's do this, and I'd be like, all right, well, I gotta walk my bike, and I would, they'd be like. <laughs> Why don't you ride it? And I'm like, I'm like, y'all don't understand. The chain just broke on the way here. And I wrote this story for years, for a long time, like long time. But wait, the chain like, was not. The no, chain the, was it on? was perfectly functioning. Bike. You should have took it off, and that. Yeah, been, I should have. Yeah. So, but I would tell him, I'm like, dude, I I was riding it on the way here. It broke again. My dad's got to fix it. Like it's a whole thing, and it. I just kept saying it over and over again and so finally i just leave the bike at jack's because i never used it anyways and uh can you ride a bike now yes i can ride a bike now okay so i you finally learned i don't about that 95 didn't seem very i true. wish we had an external camera just to prove <laughs> i'm about 90 percent sure i can ride a bike <laughs> Where, now. after when you get home send us a picture <laughs> yeah i need or to, a video yeah. and yeah. We'll, we'll post I it just see to it make sure yeah. i'm gonna say right now i don't think you can ride a bike i think i could ride it i, I think put, it's, I put it's really declining that. i'm gonna well, went from, yes i can ride a bike well 90 percent i think i can ride it you know i'm a lot more in shape than i was at nine but it's not about that no it's about balance it's about balance that's fair 
Yeah. Um, well, well, but yes, because I know so that then, I know that Cash, my son, jumped on it and immediately d- did it. Oh, really? Yeah, Lucky he was like, him. yeah. <laughs> And then my daughter was like you. It was, you know, my goodness, we're going to have to go to the emergency room every day <laughs> no when doubt. she tries, you know. No doubt. Yeah. But, yeah, so then I eventually, I just left it there at Jack's. And uh, my parents weren't big fans of that because, you know, they bought the bike. Sure. And, everything. <laughs> and uh, it's it's been there ever since. Wait, this is what I'm not getting. You were telling them. The I was chain is telling broken. them the chain was but broken. It, did they not look? Like, right. Oh, I can put well, it back you on. Know, you just, or do you I'm think like, they knew, but they were like, just no, I think Jack. They, no. Yeah, maybe Caden, but yeah, yeah. Caden would be nice keep about in mind, it. Yeah, he, you got to keep in mind that Jack and Caden were friends, and I was kind of the new kid, and so okay. they were like, "Well, let's be nice to the new right. guy." Okay. <laughs> they probably the whole time were like, "He can't ride a bike." Just yeah, let him, I bet let there was it. there was definitely an inside. There joke. was a point at some at some point when he couldn't ride the bike that Caden and Jack went, "Man, this guy's not going to do anything." In sports. Yeah. He is, he is horrible. not athletic. He is I not athletic. Smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope he's smart. Maybe he can ride it ride. Right on that, and uh, okay, and, you talked about your appearance. I did. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put. The, I think you've been, been inspired by somebody with your hairstyle, and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like that is what you're going for. I've right gotten there. that one a lot. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, that's uh, pretty good. This is Hermie from Rudolph the Red Nosed yes. Reindeer, and I've also gotten the Great Gatsby a lot. Okay, all right. That's I would still the, go with Hermie. Like, I don't yeah, think no, Hermie's a good one though. I thought about Conan, even though Conan O'Brien has the red hair. His big swoop, he has the big swoop, too, okay, so I thought yeah. about that. You do have the swoop, okay? Yes, yes. Is that something uh, that you just said, yeah, we're going swoop? Is that what it's called? I don't know what the there term is. is. Right I there. could see that. Okay, oh, look at that. All right. My inner DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah. Of course, yeah. he's about five foot. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. He's he's taller than Jack, though. I, I that's think. true. Yeah. That's true. But, uh, that's but, a yeah, good one, though. That is a good one. Yeah. Uh, do you, can you do I, the I wave? I never noticed that Hermie had an ADA button on his oh. jacket. I think that's the uh, that? Arctic Dentist Association. I think <laughs> okay. is what that is. Because everybody wanted to be funny. a dentist. Oh, not the, okay, yeah. Yeah. the American Disability yeah, he, Association. No, not that. <laughs> no. I want to be a dentist. You know, he was that guy. That's funny. So, anyway. So, how does this... I mean, did you just start... Because we have another <clears throat> photo. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get to football, I promise. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for the football. Yeah, I know. But you, you got a birthday at some point. And mm-hmm. then your gifts were supplied. Oh, yeah, I know what this one is. Yeah, and uh, it is far. There you it's go. It's concerning, honestly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, look at that, all the hair products. Yeah. Blonde, sexy hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blonde, so, sexy hair. <laughs> why did it, was that four blondes? Is that particular? Uh, yes. Um, did you use all those products? No. Well, I you didn't. look very pleased to receive right. them. I, <laughs> My mom told me to smile. No, I'm playing. No. Yeah, no, my friends thought it would be funny to, you know, have this running joke of. So they're still not in that nice stage anymore. They're no, past the I've, nice. Will be. I nice feel like I've bring. always gotten picked on fairly easily. <laughs> no, I, I got to be honest. It was easy. Target. I load the gun yes. for them. Yeah. Yes. I, this uh, this Wisconsin athletics program called Wired. Yes. I saw you on this. I I, I want to show the viewers how you take your helmet off. Just, and I want to know if you do this every time you take your helmet off. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you catch that? Though? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, how tall are those guys? Six, oh, eight? Oh, man, our offensive My line. Gosh. I think the shortest guy in our offensive line room is 6'4". Let's talk about you getting wired. Uh, we talked about the off the air, but I want you to tell this. So yeah. explain what so, happened, how they, they got you ready to go at practice. So the media team comes <clears> to me, and they're like, you're going to be mic'd up today. And I'm like, well, I'm fired up. Like, you You've know, seen NFL films. I've seen NFL films. Yeah, like, yeah. that was my, you know, sound effects. <clears throat> like, that was my yes, favorite yes, deal growing yes, up. Yes, So I'm like, you know, I finally get to be that guy, you know. Um, you know, I'm thinking, like, man, they're going to get me, like, talking to the team and, like, in the huddle, calling plays. Like, <laughs> you know, this is, like, this is what I'm made for. The leader. Yeah, the, the leader. leader. Like, it's, I'm the man. All the work I've put in is now worth it. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. this is what I've yeah. this is what I came here for. Yeah. No, I'm playing. And, of course, uh, in the midst of football season. Right. So your rivals are and watching. Everybody's and everybody's excited yeah. about, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> anyways, I'm like, all right, this is great. Well, I go out there and – two and a half hour practice and i'm like you know i'm really under the understanding that i just gave the media team some really good material like go like make, you talked about the, yeah, making like, calls yeah and all that. like i'm making calls and i'm being demonstrative and i'm you know 
yelling way more things than I normally do at practice. And, you know, I'm cutting up with coach and, you know, talking to, you know, all kinds of guys. And I mean, this is just, this is great. Like I'm, I'm on it that day. And, uh, I'm like, I leave the field and I'm like, Oh, I can't wait to see this. Like, it's going to be great. Can't wait to send it back to my family and, and show them. And, and then the next day they, they bring it to me before they release it. And they're like, here, watch this and approve it. And I'm like, I'm like, all right. And I watch it, and I'm like, it's just me talking about my hair for two minutes, which is not at all what I had intended it to be. I, I want to show that part where you're talking about your hair. Well, just show the whole video. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, CJ. Let's be perfect. Let's be perfect. Hey, I got some great news for you. Yes. Can't yell at me like you always do today. Mic'd up. <laughs> oh, you think so? You think the mic protection? <laughs> okay. Dude, this stretch right here makes me feel so much older than I actually am. Like, you think I was 40. Huh. Huh, huh. Gotta have a great week. Starts right now. Let's go, man. Let's go, man. Ooh. Ooh. Not today. We're gonna talk about like this guy. A whole counter for the third part. Let's get this back here. Hey, you? What, what do you use? Gel? Gel? No, dude. Come on, I've moved on from gel. I'm much more mature. I use a grooming tonic, and I use texture right, spray in the evening, and I blow dry my hair every night. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's not up my case. He, he said he blow dries his hair every night. <laughs> so me and Billy, who, believe it or not, did used to have hair. Right. Right. We, you know, we, we like to get a gift for everybody that comes on. We oh, that's wonderful. So the 90s of hair care, which you're obviously missing Very with nice. your $80 right. hair tonic. So <laughs> I We don't have to, blonde sexy hair. We didn't so get that. Is that that L.A. look? L.A. looks extreme sport gel, uh -huh. which yeah. is going to give you that crispy, hard, wet look that you... Wonderful. So, yeah. so is, it hard, some, is your hair crispy hard right now? Or is uh, it, no. Or is it soft and supple? It's, it's fairly soft. <laughs> okay. I go for, Would you like I to go feel Billy? No. I like to have some structure, but I like to okay. keep it. Okay. You know, Very nice. I appreciate uh, the see, back in my day, you don't even know what this is. I remember when I was a kid, you had Brill Cream. Remember? It was like <laughs> Brill Cream. It's like it, that it, paste. It, yeah. And it would a little dabble do you, I think is what it was. And it was uh -huh. always that you combed it in your hair to give it the slick look. My dad had it. You know. Well, when was the last time you had a hair product in your uh in here? Gosh, it was, be, it was before um, I met Autumn. This is in the oh, early man. 90s. Yeah, yeah. Early 90s. I remember actually going and getting a haircut. That was exciting. That you was. Know? Yeah. Rodney Webb, every time he gets a haircut, he lets me know that he's got a haircut. <laughs> like, just yeah. to rub it in. I yeah. miss haircuts, man. I do, too. Haircuts fun, are cool. Man. So did you, what did you use? Uh, the, the, it was called Dip Gel. Mm -hmm. You could get the different colors. It was mm -hmm. the looked like plasma, kind of like that. I want Very you to nice. try that out. It's going to be good. But it, <laughs> Thanks it for gave, the advice. But it, <laughs> I haven't had it in my hair in 20 years. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it kept it crisp and hard, mm. so it didn't move. Mm. It was perfect. Ah. So mm. I remember Aquanet was a big deal, Yes, um, yes. which is the hairspray, but it would make it into a brick. I and, mean, the women, whole, and the whole bathroom would be Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, 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 exactly. So anyway, there. So there is our – we had to get into hair talk yeah. uh, for that. So did – like your hair's been the same. You have not done any adjustments, really. About sixth grade. It's yeah, been the same since yeah. then. Yeah, that's fascinating because <laughs> most people go through some different. I hope stages. I never lose it. I don't got anything. Uh, I don't got <laughs> I anything. Okay. Yeah. I, I, my worst moment in my life was in high school when the guy cut my hair in high school. Said, "Oh, by the way, you're going to go bald." I just want to let you know, and it was devastating. Why would he do that? I don't know. How well, old I, were you when you went bald? Though I'm curious. Uh, I, well, like, what do you want to talk? Like, what kind of bald? Like, because um, I had receding hairline okay. and all that stuff, and a bald spot around 23 or 24 yeah Man, and that's, that's and that's i didn't know close, i had that's not far you're from where there. i'm going <laughs> but you you're good because when you go bald a lot you yeah. may notice a receding hairline but you don't know what's going on in the back and uh especially if you're single and you don't have a girlfriend or anything that's or fair. nobody's and so all of a sudden i was dating a girl and she goes, and we said something about getting a hair. And she goes, what are you going to do about the bald spot in the back? And it just tore oh, me. I'm like, whoa, what? I don't have a bald spot. Well, yeah, you do. And, <laughs> That's pretty bad. Oh, my gosh. She didn't get a second date. No. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> over. So I don't know if I've, let me see you. Take your head off. Oh, my gosh. Let me see if you're a good Everybody, bald. Everybody get ready, America. No, you're a good bald. Uh-huh. There's well, some bad balds. Let me see. 
No, you're good. You're good. I can pull this off. Right? You're like is... uh, Longo. He looks like uh, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit like Longo's hair. You know, so uh, Longo claims he's he still got it. I'm no. like, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Now I did know. We, you know, you get to a point when you have the horseshoe. And, oh you know, yeah, just, and well, we got Frank with the peninsula. Oh, Frank had the peninsula. <laughs> the peninsula. That was the best. <laughs> he, Frank had the hair that, and then he still had hair. Like he had a bald spot, but he had hair. But he let it grow down. You know, let me get this off. So it was like a mohawk. Well, no, like not really, because he kept it cut, but it came down <laughs> here. He had this, oh. and we call it the peninsula because it looked it was like just Florida. going back. <laughs> yeah, it looked like Florida or Italy, and and then yeah, Frank uh, would say Italy. Yeah, Frank would say Italy. In fact, I did a a rotary. Uh, presentation one time about frank's upcoming vacation and i used his hairline as he was going to italy so i put a close-up of his hair and i said they're going to land in rome and i had where rome would be <laughs> where you know all that you know and Doug, so do you bick uh no i could do the uh, boy this is really we did if i gotta edit this out we're going a lot more on my hair than <laughs> i planned but i have the the thing now you see it on tv that has oh, the four heads and i had you can one just of those yeah, yeah i love the that. bulldog the bulldog yeah, yeah. I have right off amazon huh uh-huh. yeah i think yeah. well i got it as a father's day gift so i just use that or a christmas gift one of the two so and, and I, I used to do the, the shower, shower thing it's, i used yeah. to do the shower thing with the brazier but i stopped and uh started using that and that's a lot quicker yeah, yeah. I like that. and so anyway there you go things you don't need to worry about I hope not. No, hope not. no. It, I, let me tell you this, though. Not to continue, but I will. Bald is not that bad as far as I gain 15 to 20 minutes every morning that you have to spend doing whatever you do. That's fair. Yeah. And so I get <laughs> I mean, up, and I'm gone. I'm done. Wait, you have a morning and a night ritual. No, nah, I mean, not necessarily. You said you Only if it. I need it to be fixed. And it really is about 10 minutes. Okay. So and <laughs> if not, I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat most days, to be honest with you. Um, so, no, so if you woke, let's say you have class and you just woke up. Yeah. You didn't blow dry the night before, so you just you just. Woke, and he didn't do the just, texture, you, whatever you, you call it. I'm just a hat. Guy. You would not show up with just your hair. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. If I it's not fixed, that. there's a hat for sure. Okay. Like it, I won't go out without it like being done. That's okay. for sure. All right. I that wish part I had I, that problem. Well, that part. Well, we that don't part, have. We just get up and go. And that part does bug me. Like if it's like. If it's not good, yeah. like I can't. Like, okay. See, I don't miss right. that. Now, do you have the? I still, I haven't had hair in thirty years. Okay, and I still now and then will feel like, oh man, I gotta. I'll, I'll, I'll feel like I have a hair getting in my face or something. Like it's if like you're the, sweating. Yeah. It's like wishful you, thinking. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's kind of you. It's like when they say you lose a leg and you and still you feel still like feel you have your leg. I yeah. still feel like I have I'll hair sometimes. The, I'll, I'll be, I'll be sitting there and I'll. Yes. Oh, yes. Shit. yes. And it'll remind me. You know? Yes. Oh, exactly. Great. All of a sudden, you go into this because let me tell you something. When you get old, you don't think you're old. Okay. Yeah. We. I still think no. I'm your age. I think my dad's getting there. Oh, he's there. All right. I want to go back to let's talk about your high school career and get away from hair talk. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you bet. You bet. Okay. You were the uh, starting quarterback from 19 to 21, right? Mm-hmm. 2019 to 21. You take over as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jacob Clark was the uh, starter before and a great career here at Rockwell. No and he was outstanding. Went on to Minnesota. I think now he's at uh, Missouri State, I believe. Missouri State, yeah. yeah. I think he's playing yeah. his fifth he transferred year. there, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, anyway, you know, it was one of those moments that. I don't know how we're going to get a guy as good as Jacob, you know? Mm. I mean, that guy was good. He was tall, and he had a good arm and all that. And he was also blonde and, and good-looking and all that stuff. That's all we do at Rockwall. It's a trademark the, of yeah, Rockwall it quarterbacks. Is. It is. <laughs> Me and Although you have never been quarterback, <laughs> Jay. Although I'm sure you could ride a bike. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That was his strong what you, point. What do you need that for? <laughs> you don't really need that, dude. But um, you come in, and I'll, I'll I'll say this. I remember this distinctly. I remember asking Rodney Webb, who was the coach then. Uh, I'm not sure where he coaches now, but um, he right. I I said, uh, Hey, what are we gonna do? And he goes, Oh, don't worry. We got this kid coming in. And he had video of you working out. I think um, it may have been with Cody Hodges. Cody Hodges, yeah. yeah. And we'll talk about Cody a here. Freshman in a at the time? Uh, no, he was a freshman, but doing a sophomore. Okay. He was over that spring, it was right? The spring. Yeah. Okay. And he shows me video of Braden throwing. And as a layman here, you know, I like to think I know a good amount about football, but I'm not even, you know, close to what coaches and players and all that know. But they can spot. Yeah, what they see and what they're looking for. But even from a, you know, regular guy's viewpoint, like, well, little zip on that that's pretty good and that was accurate and all that and he's like we're okay we're gonna be fine and he of course Braden steps in we and also had the best player in the country on our team we so did we that, did that was a huge help yeah we had Jackson Smith oh. and Jigba was the receiver was he a and senior it was his senior year, year. Yeah, I was a sophomore yeah. and he was a senior wow. yeah so, and you basically just had to get near him yeah I mean it like 
there was time like if you went back and watched from that year like i was throwing to him anytime that i had a feeling that i could complete it like Mm -hmm. i was throwing the ball to him i didn't care if he had got it four or five plays in a row and there's times like if you watch you're like that was a stupid decision to throw that, <laughs> no, but like that's, but like that's how good he was. Yes. Like if yes. he could yeah. touch the ball, he needed the ball. Like yeah, that's how essential. Bit, huh? <laughs> that's how essential it was for us as a team. Like, and I believe like that's what made a. That's what kind of made that team really good. Was like, I mean, not obviously we were a really good team in general, but like he got the ball more than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there was no like scenario where he wasn't going to be having the ball in his hands with the ability to make plays because. You know, the, every team that would play us that year would tell you their goal was to take Jackson away and make mm-hmm. the other guys beat you. But, like, our, you know, our mission was to not let that happen. And right. so, um, yeah, I mean, he's unbelievable. And then, you know, aside from what he did on the field, like, for me, um, just a phenomenal, you know, role model to be, mm-hmm. you know, as a, as a young sophomore quarterback trying to figure it out, like – having this, you know, stellar senior receiver who just takes me under his wing and shows me the ways and – really really put a lot of confidence in me and and showed me how to win on Friday nights like I mean I I can't thank him enough for everything that he did for me and I mean he shaped my career in a lot of ways well and for those that aren't aware Jackson moves on to play at Ohio State breaks numerous records there uh and only what uh three years at Ohio State three years yeah there. and uh and really only one year playing in a full-time role good point oh, yeah wow. he got injured and uh missed and, and but he breaks the Rose Bowl record for uh was it yardage and receptions and, and yardage and, he had 15 catches and 347 wow. yards in the Rose Bowl the Rose Bowl's been played since like 1902 yeah and so yeah he breaks that record. so he has that record yes and then he's drafted by Seattle and he's playing in the pros yeah. and, and I had him on my fantasy team there that's always well, a pretty good deal when you get the guy pretty, you know, know yeah. you're like i'm gonna get him on the fantasy team there you now, go what's the dynamic like coming in as a sophomore onto that team what did anyone give you a hard time or not give you the I wouldn't respect say, at first i or? wouldn't say a hard time it's kind of like billy described like you just didn't know like we hadn't played yet you know and like we went through spring ball and and that was pretty good and i was competing to win the starting job so i wasn't even necessarily the starting quarterback per se mm. until the season rolled around um and who was uh the other uh quarterback i'm trying to remember alex orgy was still here oh that's right alex yeah. orgy yeah, yeah. so who he went on to michigan yeah so Golly. he was still he was still quarterback he was still playing quarterback here um and we were both competing for the job um and then he went and transferred to another high school and and i was able to step in as the quarterback and uh even then though it was kind of like you know we know we got jackson and we know we got some guys returning from the previous year but it was like you know you know, is the guy that's going to be leading the charge? Is he right. going to know what's going on and how to, you know? Because mm-hmm. I truly like, you know, there is nothing like Friday nights in Texas, especially Rockwall, Texas. And so, you know, everything that's done in practice <laughs> is so much different than it is on the field, as far as from a from a an emotional feeling standpoint. Um, you know, and so I'm sure like the rest of the team felt the way that coaches did. Like, we don't know how this is going to go, <laughs> you know, uh, we feel all right about it, but it's like when the lights come on, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, we had a really, really good season and all mm-hmm. that. And spoiler alert, it went fine. It, it did. Okay. It, it went, turned it out okay. after the first pass. Yeah. 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 We're going to come were, to that later. Don't they spoil were like, that. we'll we, let the, we, they'll let the sophomore stay. Yeah. We'll let the sophomore uh, yeah. we'll let him play. Uh, because there is a, uh, a first pass I want to talk about, but that's later. We have to set gotcha. it up because yeah. we have a couple questions from a couple coaches that you'll, and they'll be a part of that. So <laughs> we're going to get to that here in a second, but okay. So you step in as a sophomore and you have Jackson. And let me picture, let me just tell you how good Jackson was. Jackson was a freshman on the varsity when, when he was a freshman. And I re- never forget this. There's there's two things I remember distinctly of seeing uh, these really good players in their first play that I see him play. I remember Braden's that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> and, then, so, so and, then, and then Jackson's, which Jackson's was, a I think, a six-yard completion. But it was a screen pass to him. So they just throw it out there. And the defense was against Highland Park. And I don't I mean, know if he made remember. like three people miss. Yeah, yeah. 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 You were. Did you remember the, the touchdown that he didn't get called against right, Mesquite? Right. That was your. I was like sophomore year. Right. No, 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 no. His freshman year against Mesquite. Oh, that's when right. He should have had in the a corner touchdown. of the end zone. Yes. yes, yes. He makes an unbelievable <clears throat> catch in the corner of the end zone. But we didn't have a replay. But he clearly had a touchdown. They didn't give it to him. But they uh-huh. throw a screen pass on the first reception he ever makes. And I remember on the air we're talking about. It. We go, oh, freshman Jackson Smith is in. You know, and kind of do I know? It's exciting to see what he can do. And they throw him a screen pass, and he makes like three guys miss. There's no block whatsoever and he only gets six yards but the whole i know me and david sweet are just 
<laughs> what was that? Yeah. Because he also <clears throat> caught the pass while there was a defender there. If I remember right, the defender had read it. So mm-hmm. the defender's already in the way. He makes the catch, makes a miss, makes another guy miss, makes another guy, and goes six yards. It was the best six-yard reception ever in the history of American football, in my opinion. <laughs> and, it, and honestly, like... I think when you see a guy that talented, you just see him catch the ball and run, and you're like, that guy looks right. different than everyone else they on just the field. They, they move a certain way. <laughs> There's no question. And to be fair, that's what it looked like with Braden when he would throw. When mm-hmm. he would throw a pass, you're just like, whoa. Okay, Something special. This is different. This is different than the other guys we've seen. Uh, okay, so we uh, I, I want to talk about this, and then we're going to go to a couple questions here. But I want to let everybody know. All right. First of all, you go to the state. Your first year as a starter, we go to the state semifinals, furthest that Rockwall has ever been until, uh, other than the 63 state wow. championship. So we go play Duncanville in the state semifinals, yeah. have the incredible win against Allen that year mm-hmm. uh, at AT&T Stadium. That's the one. That's yeah. Seen. yeah. He had to pee. I had to pee. <laughs> yeah. I made my mark. Broadcasting know. history there. Yeah, a little broadcast <laughs> history there. But that, uh, talk about that game because the thing the I Allen think the particular. Allen game because were we I think we were in the Garland district then, right? Weren't we in the Garland? We were in the Mesquite district. Was it the Mesquite district yeah. then? Okay. But I just remember that team that team was so good, it just didn't seem like there was a lot of competition in the regular season. Oh, it, yeah. You no, know? You're absolutely right. And so you don't know, man, it looks like we're really good, but we're getting ready to go up against Allen. Number one team in the, the state. Yep. Yeah. So your mindset going into that one, because you and Jackson have an unbelievable game in that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, no, I think, in it, you know, to, to, to preface that, like, the season before we had played Allen – and yeah, I mean, you called the game like you know, like we were right there. Yes, you know, and we lose by I think twelve points in the second half, and yes. Jackson had gotten hurt. Exactly, and it was like it was an know, unbelievable game. Before we left so much out there that we were like, we felt, you know, we felt like we should have won, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, so that whole off season and that whole <laughs> summer and that entire, really, that entire season was just so much build up from everybody. Just mm. we knew we were going to get them again. We knew it was going to be, you know, the game of the year for us. We knew we were going to have to play our best game. Um, and so when it, when the week came by, when the week came up, you know, we weren't. I don't think anybody was um, surprised. You know, we had expected this, and now it was here, and it was time to handle our business. Um, and real quick, not only is it up against Allen, it's at AT and T Stadium. Yeah, you know which the to, you know the year before we played them in front of ten thousand people, and this time we were going to be playing in front of. Yeah, twenty thousand people. Yeah, I mean, double the crowd. Credit to Coach Webb, played him at Williams the year before, and the reason he picked because coaches have to agree on a stadium to play, mm-hmm. and he fought for Williams, which is in Garland. You know yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. And it holds ten thousand. Right. It was. I've never seen a stadium packed that much. It was so much. cool. Uh, yeah. It was really good. But the reason he did was because, and I thought it was a great idea. He's like, I don't want. There wasn't going to be room for the Allen band, if I remember right, yep. and there wasn't going to be room for all these Allen fans, so he didn't want to make it overwhelming. We had 5,000, they had 5,000. Exactly, and so that was the reason. But then, of course, the next year, Allen's like, we ain't falling for that again. We're going somewhere big. So we end up at at and Go ahead. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it was unique because I even remember, like, throughout August, you know, when we're practicing before we have a game, but that those early practices, um, you know, I remember coaches would script certain things that we were like, we're going to say, like, this is for when we play Allen. This is good work for when we play Allen. We're going to face Allen's defense in practice today, um, even though it's, like, the fourth practice of the year. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. everything was geared towards that because we knew, like, we knew that was going to be what the hump that we had to get over. And, you know, if you go back to that time, I believe it was four, 16, 17, and 18 was all second-round exits. Yes. And so for Coach yes. Webb, like, it was, yes. you know – Obviously, he is. He's the man. And, and not only second round exits, heartbreaking second round exactly. exits. Exactly. And we yes. had been so close between Saxe and Coppell mm-hmm. and, and uh, mm-hmm. Allen the year before. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was really pivotal for us that we made a run, you know, and we got over that hump finally um, because we, we, I mean, we had a special team and we had the guys to do it. And it just kind of sucked that, you know, we kept running into, you know, really good teams early on in the playoffs. Um, and so finally we get to that week and like I said, I mean, the team was just on a, like, I mean, the team was just on a mission, like to win this game. Like it didn't matter who we were going to play next. It didn't matter who was left in the playoffs. Like everything was about winning this game. And I remember the week before we had played Harker Heights in the first mm-hmm. round of the playoffs <laughs> and we win the game 47 to seven. And on Saturday, like our routine was to kind of go in and watch the film and get a little lift in or whatever. And coach Brooks, like. He was offensive coordinator at the time. Coach Brooks, like, rips the team, like, or rips the offense, and he's like, 
you know, if we play like that, like, we're going to be turning our stuff in. Like, he was so mad. And I'm like, we just won 47-7. <laughs> God. But, like, he had the standard of, like, you know, we have to be at a certain level to win this game. <laughs> um, and Coach Webb was the same way. So when we came in, you know, everybody was just in tune with what we were doing. And finally we get to the game, and, you know, it was just – it was kind of like a God thing. I mean, everything was going our way. I mean, I, you know, me and Jackson couldn't miss and Mm-mm. we're running the ball and, and we're getting some stops. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, you know, they mm-hmm. scored a good bit, but we knew they were going to score. Mm-hmm. Like it's Allen. Even um, if I remember, I went up 14, nothing, right. Uh, didn't Rockwell at one point had a 14, we got point a 14 lead. point lead in the yeah. third quarter. And I was like, yeah, this is like done. Like, yeah. We're, yeah. You know. Yeah. And then they score 21 unanswered. Yes. We tie it with, yeah. with uh, we tie it, uh, and yeah, at 52-52, they score. They go 59-52. Mm-hmm. to 52. We get the ball with however much time left. Uh, I think it was like seven minutes left in the uh-huh, game. Uh-huh. Have this, like, methodical drive. Uh-huh. Uh, we score <clears throat> on a little bootleg, like a little jet, fake jet bootleg to Klinkowski yep. from, like, the three. Yep. And then the infamous Scotty play yeah, yeah, for two. Yeah, two-point conversion. And, that and, and, that, yes. and that story, <laughs> like, it's, I mean – everybody's told it it's completely true like we're in the huddle and jackson had been cramping and we're like all right well like we just need him for one play like dude like get some gatorade or something like it's one play and i'm like you've played this entire game and mind you my best friend caden marshall is the guy that you know is in place of jackson in case we can't run it with him who like you know i have complete confidence in Caden's outstanding but i'm like it's jackson smith right he's in the game right so then coach is like, we're going. Mm-hmm. And, like, I'm thinking, like, all right, well, Jackson's good. When we go out there in the huddle, like, he's not there. I'm like, screw <laughs> it. Like, here we go. So um, we we break the huddle. And, uh, you know, I remember there was a pre-snap motion. J.J. had, like, a four-yard. He was our ex receiver. Uh-huh. He's got, like, a four-yard motion. And I see him, you know, get his steps. And I clap for the snap. And then it's like. The snap is terrible. Uh-huh. It's at my feet. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm just trying not to get a knee on the ground because, you it'd know, be down. it'd be down. And so <clears throat> I get the snap. And we had this whole, like, it was like a fake speed option reverse. Well, the fake is out the window at this point <laughs> because the snap is so bad. The timing's all messed up. And so now I'm just like, where is the reverse guy? I'm trying to find him. I flipped the ball to Caden. One of the coaching points on that play was that Klinkowski – our H back was in practice. He was always getting out so fast that the it would be easy for the defense right. to know this is a trick play <clears throat> mm-hmm. because if we were running, we we're trying to fake a speed option. So if we're running a speed option, he's going to be blocking. Blocking, yeah. Well, if you're running out for a pass, the whole defense is alert. Like, hey, this guy's running the wrong way. We know <clears throat> what's going on. Um, well, of course, we get to the game. We've coached it up as hard as we can. He gets out way <laughs> too fast. There's no sort of sell. And I'm on the ground, or I think I'm on the ground, and uh, I'm looking back, and I'm just like, I'm just screaming, "Throw it, throw it!" Because I see like they're they are completely in tune with what we're doing. Yeah, they're not fooled. They're not fooled. And so there's a guy running at Caden, and I'm just like, "Please get rid of the ball. Do not get sacked." And finally, he like just heaves one <laughs> and falls down, and I'm just like, "It was like a movie." It sounds like, like a movie. Yeah. The, the ball is in the air. <clears throat> For what felt like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like... Oh, it looked like a balloon. I'm like... And then I look at where it's going. There's like four Allen defenders. Right, right, I'm right. like... You don't even see a yellow jacket there. No, no. <clears throat> you don't even see the guy that catches it. No. And so I'm like, this doesn't look good at all. Like, And then it comes down and out of nowhere, you just see an orange jersey jump and, <laughs> and catch the ball and come down in the end zone. And I mean... I don't think I've ever like felt the eruption like within myself, but within our crowd and our sideline, it was uh-huh. just like, oh my gosh! Like, it was unlike any other football moment I maybe ever experienced. Well, and then a couple cool. other things on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, if I understood it right, JJ was not supposed to be there. No, the ball. That's why I was talking about the Klinkowski <clears throat> thing because we had one guy that we ever threw it to, and it was Kate Klinkowski, and he caught it, and like that was the play because. The whole design was like, it's a trick play. They're not going to see it. He's going to be wide open. Mm-hmm. We're just going to dump it to him. Well, you know, that, that did and, not And for those who don't understand, what, what you're talking about is, as a blocker and a tight end, normally you block. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 
he was supposed to look like he's blocking and then wait. And it's speaking as a former tight end, yeah. that's the hardest thing in the world is to wait to go out on your to route. To delay. Yeah, yeah, because you're just in a panic of like, I, got, I can't be too late. I got to go. Exactly. He did that. So that's what Braden's talking about, where the, the if you're anything on defense, you're like, well, clearly this guy's not blocking. Yeah. Let's And they read it. They did. They did, a, they did a phenomenal job. I mean, it was just, you know, we one guy went up and made a great play on the ball, and, you know, the rest is history. But, yeah, I mean, such a bizarre, like... I, what I was going to say is I remember at AT&T Stadium, the booths are all open because it's an indoor stadium. So our booth, we're in the end zone, okay? That's where they put everybody uh, for any high school games. And I think even the Cowboy announcers, Brad Sham and them, they're in the end zone because we're next to his booth. We're actually next to the Cowboys booth. We're in the Spanish, uh, the booth that Spanish broadcast is very in, nice. which was very hard because I didn't know Spanish that well, and I had to do the whole game in Spanish, and that's very difficult. You made it through. Yeah, I made yeah. it through. But anyway, um, that play, you talk about things erupting. You can have a massive crowd there, but it holds 100,000 people. So Every crowd looks small there. Every crowd looks kind of small. And when you hear them cheer, you always hear them from a distance, uh, at least from our vantage point. Because we're on the other side of the end zone, too. We're not. It ain't underneath us. It's on the other side. So I'm calling it, say, seeing the same things that you're seeing. He's just throwing it up there. He has to. And there's nobody there. We're about ready to go be down by one. we got an onside kick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get the onside kick team ready and hope that we can get it. He catches it. I go nuts. But the thing I remember is the feeling of the sound making its way. Like yeah. you felt it. Like a wave. I'm yeah. saying like you were on the field and you could just see it and feel it hitting yeah. you yeah. on the field. Because yeah. I'm very confident that the Allen fans are yelling too because it looked like that. I'm sure they're thinking we stopped it. They're thinking we just won the game. Yeah, we yeah. just won the game. So both sides are going nuts. And you just feel that noise uh-huh. come at you. Um, and we'll have to, you know. We'll play uh, that. Yeah, we'll play that clip because, and for people that don't remember it. J.J. wins the motion. Ball on the ground. They're going to pitch it to Caden Marshall. Now he's going to have to throw it. He'll throw it in the end zone. Top! It's Smith! It goes J.J. Williams! J.J. Williams will make the catch! Oh! Back in the end zone! Holy cow! Yes, sir! I want some high fives in the booth right now. Come on, now. There it is. You're right. Yes, they're, going up there. they're going to the regional quarterfinals. They have beat the Allen Eagles 60 to 59. I've got goosebumps. I got a pee. It's just so many things going on wow. here in the booth right now. My mom just texted from Lampasas to let me know that Rockwell won over Allen 60 like, to 59. Well, thank thank back, goodness we have her. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're going to announce that here in a second. Yeah. Yep. So thanks, Mom. <laughs> But, okay, so we move on, we win that. And that uh, many people have said that's one of the best high school games ever. Uh, I've never been a part of anything So up to this point, that's your greatest sports sports moment? Yeah, as far as games go, I mean, that's probably the greatest game I've ever been a part of. I mean, maybe not statistically or whatever Mm -hmm. you say, but... You know, from a uh, the build up to that Excitement. game, the way that it went, mm-hmm. we're in AT and T Stadium. Like, yeah, it was it was unbelievable. Well, let's let people know you are also the all time leader in career touchdown passes in six A, uh, with one hundred and twenty nine. And we have that clip of when you uh, broke the record. It's pretty exciting for you at that point. Yes, it is. Three we see. I hope I do it in about five more weeks. There you go. I hope I do hope you hold on to it for a while. It's a deep route to the there middle. It and it's caught touchdown rock wall, and there's the record. The Yellow Jackets and Braden Lawn now have the all-time touchdown passing record. They mob him at the 45-yard line. Way to go, hey! Braden Lawn with a great career here for the Rockwell Yellow Jackets. Boy, we've been blessed That's to watch show. kids like Braden play their whole career. You gotta see Daddy down here, guys. You gotta <laughs> see his dad, just like you'd think he would. Jerron got a big old high five from him. Going to find him now. That's just uh, really, really one of the coolest things in terms of high school athletics that I've seen. That's a special moment, too. I Always good to hear the, the jazz tones of uh, Tyler Anderson there when he would There's do the games. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, no. All right, I mean, so I'm, you say you have a story behind this. So if you play that clip, I don't know if you noticed at the beginning, but me and Caden and two, like a, a couple of our guys are looking to the sideline because basically, like, we're trying to get the record. We know, like, the next touchdown pass is going to break the record. And so the whole drive, and, like, as you can see, we're smoking North Garland. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> we kind of – we're having we're having their, our way with them. And so we know, like, as soon as Coach calls in a play, like, it's probably going to be a touchdown. It's going to be, you know. So we're all getting ready. We're going down the field. We keep handing it off. It's like, all right, when is the call coming in? Like, mm-hmm. when are we doing it? 
and I know exactly what he's going to call because I see what they're in, and I'm like, I'm, I know exactly what he's going to do. And he finally calls it, well, North Garland, for whatever reason, they change what they're in. Mm-hmm. And so they're in a pretty decent, like, look to defend the play that we're in. And I'm like, so I look over, and I'm like, you want this? Like, this is what you want? And uh, he's like, he's like just staring. <laughs> And, he, and what's weird is me and Coach Brooks are so, like, in tune with each other that, like, you know, I'll give him a nod or he'll give me a nod and I'm like, all right, I got you. Or, like, he'll, he'll you know, think about this, you know, whatever. I always, like, we always were in tune and he's just, like, staring, like, not even, like, you know, remotely, you know, assume, like, he doesn't know what I'm looking at or whatever. And so then I'm like, all right, well, whatever, I'm just going to run the play. And I'm like, I'm, I mean, I'm going to be smart and not throw a pick, but, like, this isn't going to work is what I'm thinking in my head. And so I catch the snap and ride the fake. And and I see Meeks kind of get behind the guy, and I just kind of make this throw, like, like over the head of the of the defense. And Meeks runs underneath it and catches it. But, like, terrible play design and play call. <laughs> and it worked out. But right. we always <clears throat> laugh about that because, like, that's not at all how we had drawn it up. Well, and let me take you behind the scenes. And if, on the and if call. you watch the, if we had the wide view, you would see there's no other receivers running routes. Right. Oh, that's because true. Because they thought that I was going to change it. Okay. So, so it's yeah. just Meeks. Yeah, it, that's it's the just... only guy running a route. So, the, so we know it's coming up when we get ready to call it. The whole week, we're like, okay, it's going to be probably midway through the game. How many pass touchdowns did you have to throw that game? Five. Five. Okay. So you get to four. We're all aware of it now. What you don't know probably, and we had this with Jack. Jackson, when Jackson he you broke know, the bro- receiving yards record. Yeah, he broke the receiving yards record. Is and yards are tougher to track than than no touchdowns doubt, of because course. you got to know everything. Yeah. Yes. So while we're in the booth and we're calling a game when there's a record getting ready to be broken, you have a million people that are coming in there asking you questions about it. Is this it? Was it? Hey, was it? And they act like you're not even doing a broadcast. Yeah. They just expect you to stop and oh, we'll just hit pause and talk to you for a little bit. <laughs> and so we're trying to keep our mental state of like this is a big moment, big, big moment. And then the other part of it was, me and David always have a very good connection on he knows when to stop and for me to take over for the mm-hmm. play-by-play. Except for this one. Because something he happened. He keeps talking. He keeps talking. <laughs> and like I, and all that's going through my head is like, we're about to break the record. And David just keeps going about blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, uh, you, you got to stop because he's he, the ball's in the air. And, and, <laughs> and then that's why the call is so off, at least in my opinion, uh. because it's like, we should be a lot more excited. But why, when it's made, I do it. And I think even Dave was like, oh, my gosh, that was it. And then there's all these people in there like, is that it? Is that it? And, and he's it was, talking about dinner or something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was the most off thing that I've probably ever called, and I feel bad about it to this day. Oh, no, I thought it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's um, – you also are ranked second in career passing yards in 6A. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is, uh, and then also – got to bring this up. That's with 11,159 yards is what you've thrown for. You hold the high school career and season record for passing attempts, completions, yards, and touchdowns in 6A. Did you know that? In a season? Uh, let's see here. A season. Yeah, season record. Oh, records. that's neat. Yeah. I didn't know that, actually. Yep. And then um, I will come to this one now. Your 15th all-time. In, now, th- those are records in 6A. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if you go all classifications, your 15th in, all, in career passing yards. Okay. Your 15th. Do you know who's 14th? Um, who is 14? That would be Ace Whitehead of the Lampasas Badgers. <laughs> oh, y'all were hearing <laughs> <it out. laughs> uh, He uh, is about 402 yards more than you. Oh, so very nice. only a badger that yeah. is trained like we are, that, finely yeah. tuned machines that we are, could possibly you know get ahead you of us. You know, at a school like Lampasas, there was probably just no backup quarterback. <laughs> that was and so he just started he for four Andrews. years and... <laughs> He's well, got more yards than anybody. To show <laughs> he, how had, good, he had to stay in the game. <laughs> to show how good he is in football, he's playing baseball now for Longhorns. I know, Longhorns. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's their other pitchers. He's really good. He's a really good athlete. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, let me see here. These are just all amazing things. Well, as a senior, you threw for 306, uh, 3,657 yards, 36 uh, touchdowns. Uh, you were the 6A uh, District 10 Offensive MVP as a senior. Um, and then you were District 10 Newcomer of the Year as a sophomore when you threw for 4,231 yards and 52 touchdowns. So these are numbers that I think even the, you know, 
the biggest jacket fan, I don't think we expected these kinds of numbers coming in. So it's just super impressive uh, to me. And so you well, now let's go to the questions. We have your two high school coaches. Very nice. And so we got first. Let's go to Coach Webb and see what Coach Webb's question is. Hey, Braden, I have a question for you. Who is your favorite high school head coach? The guy that led your team to the state semifinals? Or that other guy who uh, was the head coach for a couple of disappointing early playoff exits? <laughs> <laughs> Only oh, Webb. That is the most that. Rodney Webb thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you don't have to answer that if you yeah, don't want well, to. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I will say, you know, I was – so fortunate to play for two incredible great high school football coaches and you know two men that really shaped my life in a lot of ways and uh were phenomenal role models for me and um you know just did a lot for my career but just you know so much for my for my life and for my childhood and uh taught me so much about you know doing things the right way and being a good person and being a role model and you know understanding the role that I'm in um, you know, and at the same time, teaching me how to compete, teaching me how to win, um, teaching me football. Um, but yeah, I really I can't say enough good things about those uh, Coach Brooks and Coach Webb. And um, you know, I'm still you know just as close with both of them mm-hmm. as I've ever been. So That's it's cool. a it's such a unique situation. You for had me. a everything like a if if it could work out, it worked out for you as far as people around you. There's I no mean, question. You, all the way to your family. Of There's course. no question. Uh, and then the coaches. Let's see what Coach Brooks has to say here. <laughs> All right, Braden Locke, I've got not one but two questions for you. Um, who your favorite head coach is, that would have been way too easy. It's, I think, pretty obvious to everybody who that is. Um, so I wanted to ask you this. Uh, you threw an interception uh, in the spring of your first year at Rockwall. Uh, I think you'll know the one that I'm talking about. Uh, just wanted to ask what your thought process was. Uh, in particular, after the interception was thrown. So talk us through that. Uh, let us know what you were thinking on that play. Um, second question is this. Uh, your first pass of your high school career was in a game against Highland Park. Uh, we threw a little bender to Jackson. Um, it was supposed to have been to Jackson. I just want to know um, who you were throwing to on that play. Maybe you thought there was somebody uh, coming behind Jackson, another receiver. I just would like to hear... Uh, how you would analyze that play and what your what your thoughts were on that play. Um, if you guys run out of things to talk about, I think you can probably do a great Coach Webb impression. Maybe throw a Coach Colvin impression in there too. Um, I'm sure you got plenty of Coach Brooks impressions. So can't wait to hear your answers to these questions. We'll see you later. So talk about the interception in the is so it spring. That is a very uh, distinct memory for me. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my first spring, I'm a freshman. I'm going to be a sophomore. Mm-hmm. And you know, like I was talking, like I was telling you guys earlier, like I was unproven. Like I could throw the football, but like that was about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was 175 pounds. Like I was a new guy. Like nobody knew a lot about me. Um, so it's a spring scrimmage in that in that is 2019 spring and uh I throw an interception and we're like doing a red zone drill and I throw an interception and I'm like oh, you know shoot man like I threw an interception like that sucks mm-hmm. you don't want to do that <clears throat> but I just kind of like I'm not a bad body language guy but I'm just like oh man dang it you know whatever of course the guy with the balls taking off celebrating right. but it's practice <laughs> so we're not tackling and like killing each other and all that well I'm like pissed off or whatever, and I turn around and Coach Brooks is making a beeline at me, and I'm like, like man, this must have been a pretty stupid interception. <laughs> like maybe I did something really wrong. And he was like, chase the ball, chase the ball. He's like screaming at me and just rips me for not chasing the ball right, from my right. interception. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, okay, and I'm running. <laughs> You know, oh, you like start a, running right then. Yeah, like I just take off. Ten running. minutes later, right? And and he's then, already getting a drink of water. I'm like, I'm like man, like. But you're was, running, man. And so I'm like, man, he was really upset, and he never like Coach Brooks would. He was he he coached ball hard, but like not like that. Like, and I was like, man, he really got after me today. So I go home and whatever. I tell my dad or whatever. Well, then he calls me that night, and he's oh. like, 
He's like, how you doing? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm good. I'm he's, running, coach. I'm still running. Yeah. He's like, I'm good. Or I'm like, I'm good. He's like, got your first uh, butt chewing today. You all right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, coach. I'll chase down the interceptions from now on. He's like. Yeah, you better. <laughs> how, <laughs> that was it. How cool is it that he called you? It so is he, cool, he had yeah. And that, that was you know, like, that's... you know, me and Coach Brooks, like we have such a, a good relationship, and, and he truly knows how to care for the players in, 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 in you know, such a unique way. And um, But, yeah, it's, such a, it, it's a funny story now that we look back on. But, yeah. <laughs> well, and it's also one of those deals coaches have to make that point of, I don't care if you are going to be the starting quarterback, we're going to rip you. Do things yeah, the right way. Yeah, do it yeah, my way. Do it. Don't care who you are. Okay, and then I remember this, the very first pass from Braden Long. Mm-hmm. See, I remember Jackson's first catch. I also remember Braden's first pass, and I don't have the same – memory like of yeah. Jackson's so walk us through that it's against Highland Park and it is a bender from uh Jackson Smith. yeah so Jackson's in the slot and I knew the play that like they scripted the first few <clears throat> plays of the game so I knew going into the game like we're calling this play ball's going to Jackson like we're gonna get this thing rolling it's my first game it's my first start I've got all the nerves in the world so I'm like no better way than to you know show the fans like I'm here you know like let's go and um, I run out there and like I hear is it is it Dale is it Dale that does it at the Dale's stage? the PA yeah okay so I hear Dale say you know under center for the Yellow Jackets number eight Braden Lock yeah, and yeah. I literally got chill bumps and I'm like man like this is this and is if I know Dale he started with may I have your attention please probably and then so he probably says so it. then he does but it. I just yeah. remember yeah. the very first time that I heard my name at Wilkerson for a game I just I, that's it so was great a, it was a different feeling than ever before and I you know as a kid growing up in Rockwell that's all I ever wanted yeah 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 that's so great. I have that moment with myself when I'm jogging out there and then I'm like <clears> all right like it's time to go let's let's do this thing so <laughs> I snapped the ball and uh we got a little play action fake Jackson breaks his route across the middle, and I just rear back and throw it, like, probably as hard as I can throw it. And that thing just <laughs> takes off. <laughs> Unlike any pass I've ever thrown. I'm looking at it like, man, that is so bad. <laughs> yeah. I distinctly remember because we're also excited. So, And then the other thing is, I don't know, when you're at Wilkerson, can you hear the crowd when you're doing the game? Yeah, yeah. So the crowd can kind of see what's going on. Like Jackson's running down the field. He's right. open. And he's like, wide open. And I'm throwing. And so they're like getting geared up. You can hear the ooze like, uh. uh yeah. And as soon as the ball comes out, I just hear the crowd go, oh. <laughs> and then it's like silent. And I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> the funniest thing, though, and I want to ask Coach Brooks. We called a screen pass on the next play, so he let me throw it again. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't it's a screen it. pass. If you ever rail that one, That's then true. we got problems. That's true. Yeah, That's but fair. here's the thing I remember because we're the same way. We're like, here we go, man. We got Braden You're in ready. there. We've heard all about him. This guy is unbelievably accurate. This guy, he can hit the left eye of a fly if you ask him to. <laughs> First, oh, play action. He's got Smith wide open. It's high. Incomplete. Incomplete. And I just remember looking at David, and, and I think Tyler was doing it, and we all kind of had a, are we sure about this guy? Like, Do we, does he know what he's doing? We've sucks. been fooled. I've it never seen a quarterback miss a receiver as bad as that one. It was the – and then you went on to throw for over 300 yards and, uh, in, in that, that game. game. Yeah. So and did that, was the, shake, that game did that was the most you? yards I ever threw for in a game. Really? Did you know that? I didn't know oh, that. Really? I always think that's funny. My worst pass ever in my highest yard. And let ever. me tell you, I mean, it was to a point that Jackson doesn't even – you know, most receivers – He doesn't even top, look for the ball. Uh, no, like. he doesn't even attempt it because it's, in his mind, I'm sure he's like, well, apparently he's throwing to somebody else. And there was no deeper route, if I remember right. Nope. And so we Stirred don't know where it's going. Open space. Yeah. <laughs> and I, can, I just think about your dad kind of like, okay, I guess I'll start smoking now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, uh, this is so, not going as planned. You know? So in that moment, are, are you – does that shake you at all or you have the personality that's like on to the next uh, one? I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't say it necessarily shakes me. I was definitely like, holy smokes, <laughs> that was terrible. But – yeah, it was like, all right, what's the next Gotta play? And and yeah. that's what I love about the game is it's so fast that like anything that bad, anything bad that happens, like more times than not, you've you got the chance to make it up on the very next play. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Quick. it's just got to be your mentality. 
Yeah, and that's that's one of the cool things. Like basketball kind of has that too. In baseball, you mess up at the plate or something. You got to wait a while to go oh, yeah. make up for it. Twenty minutes later, <clears> just... <laughs> yeah. And so you, that's yeah, all you think no about. It. And like even like you know you strike out in baseball, you go out to the fields. No guarantee you're going to get a ball. Like, right. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. You just want to do something good. Yeah. Right. And, and the, <laughs> that's all you're thinking about. Okay. So uh, this incredible uh, high school career, the, the the Duncanville game. That's the thing. It's hardest. What do you think about when you get the Duncanville semifinal? Because Jackson gets hurt in that game, if I remember right, like later in that game. Am I right? Yeah. I well, I and you I did got too. Hurt. Yeah, I you got hurt. Separated my AC joint. Right. In that game. And so you were not even if we win and we're going to the state championship, you're not going to be able to play, are you? Or are I don't know. Not? I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I would yeah. have probably tried. I mean, but but yeah, and but that was the only game that I ever saw. It was, since you and Jackson were playing in, in Jackson, they shut Jackson down in that game. They covered him well. In yeah, that I mean, the thing, like, ultimately, they were able to dedicate two people to him yes. at all times. And they were bigger and stronger than us in the box. So mm-hmm. the run game, we could never get the run game going. Um, so schematically, you know, they, you know, they did well. their plan was foolproof. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot we could do. You know, we weren't throwing the ball to other guys. And, uh, you know, I wasn't taking off. So mm-hmm. it was like yeah. we were kind of. What was your career rushing yards? Do you remember? Probably like I was playing. No, I mean I, I don't know. I think it was like isn't it like four yards or something? Yeah, it's four yards, I think. It's four yards. Just I it's think... because okay, I should have <laughs> never took all those knees. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell people. I took too many That's knees what it was. from you all the probably, wins. You're right because if you didn't take those knees, you're probably at two thousand yards or thing. so. <laughs> if you go back and watch, you know one of the things that we do. We take a knee from the shotgun. That's right. It's like that's five, five yards. yard loss. That's right. That's okay. right. So that's okay. minus five go. rushing yards. Okay. We would always joke around about how Braden, the one thing he couldn't do was run. He uh, just did not run. Now, a lot of it was you just didn't run. It wasn't, I don't you like couldn't. running. Yeah. No, you didn't like running. He chooses not to run, like in Seinfeld. And so I do Skip remember. Comparison. Yeah. I do remember my, the maybe one of the moments we got the most excited was your senior year, and I think it was against Highland Park when you it looked like you ran for a touchdown. Like they should have gave it to me, twelve yards. <laughs> <laughs> you were clearly out of bounds, but I know, I know, and, I but I remember me and Sweet just like, oh my gosh, he's running and he's going to score a touchdown, yeah. and it was it was out of bounds. Funny story count. about that play is we had been running that play for like same play we had been running it for years, and I always told I always joked because the the whole running thing was always a running joke, right, like, right. You know, hey coach, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it next time we call this play. I was like, I'm just gonna pull it and take off. Yeah. And he was like, You better get it. Yeah. He's like, if you pull it, you better get it. Yeah. Especially if it's on fourth down. Right. And I was like, Yeah, of course I'm gonna get it. Like, no <laughs> no duh. And uh so I tell him I always keep I make the joke. Every time he calls the play, I make that same joke. I'm like, I'm gonna pull it. Like mm-hmm. eventually I promise you I'm gonna do it. And he's like, Just as long as you get it, I won't say anything. So for whatever reason, uh, we run the play against Highland Park, and I just see them. They, I mean, they were well coached. Yeah. They know I don't run. Exactly. I just see them screaming off the edge, and I'm like, "There's nobody left." <laughs> <laughs> so I just pull it, and like for like ten yards, nobody sees me. It was. Me. It was beautiful. Yeah. It nobody sees me. It looked good. And then you know yeah. everybody catches up everybody after a while. Up. I mean, it was people were timing it, and then we were using calendars. It was the only time that I ever saw somebody in the middle of a play get delay a game. That's how slow <laughs> he was. Yeah. But you had a good ten yards. It was. I think it went. It went for like yeah, twelve, yeah. fourteen. Yards, it was, something yeah, like it that. Was, we were excited. Okay, so now let's move on to your senior year. Definitely, you're getting recruited. Mm-hmm. Uh, name the schools that were pretty interested in you. Um, so at the end of it, it came down to uh, Mississippi State, North Carolina, Miami, um, SMU, TCU, um, Louisville was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to say that was I had some other offers, but those were like the main the big ones. Yeah, the main yeah. ones that I was considering. Um, you did, and so you end up going to Mississippi State and mm-hmm. head coach Mike Leach. Yep. And you said, well, "Give me a good Mike Leach story." Oh man, there's so so. And Jay, I know you, for those that don't know, Mike Leach is unlike any other football coach ever in the history of college football. Yeah, he um, would not mind on his post game conferences, news conferences. Too. Yeah, you can look up Mike Leach moments on YouTube, and uh-huh. it's like. A twenty-minute video of just God knows what. He's going to talk about aliens. He's going to talk no about doubt. weddings. Um, uh, he's, he doesn't even talk. This guy looks intense. Oh, oh, he was the best. He was great. Um, so give us a good one. We all talked about Trump a lot in here, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there is a Trump story. So one. So we're practicing for the Ole Miss game, which I, I don't know if y'all know, but the Ole Miss Mississippi State game is called the Egg Bowl. It's the biggest game, like down south in Mississippi, like 
that it means a whole lot. Right. It's the game of the year. We could be one in ten, and if we win that game, mm-hmm. good season. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's how they, that's how they feel. So we're practicing for Ole Miss. We're at a drill about to start. The offense is on the field, and we're waiting him, waiting for him to call the play. I'm I'm not out there, but they're waiting for him to call the play. And uh, hey, coach, you, coach Leach used to always do this thing when like he would call the team up. He would always be like, "Here, hurry." hurry up like he would just like complain it was so funny but he would yell at the team here hurry come on like he would yell at the guys he and always s- seemed annoyed oh exactly he always seemed yes. like Ugh. yeah like hurry up yeah. like let's well, go I mean- so we're at practice he we look over or like the guys are looking over and they start yelling at him they're like coach hurry <laughs> hurry up and so then we can tell like he's talking on the phone uh-huh. and we're like during practice. During practice, which, like, if you've been at football practice, it's not the place to take a phone right, call. Like, right. it's there's an intensity level to it. So we're like, what is he doing? Well, and mind you, our AD is at practice that day. So, like, it's not the best look when the head coach <laughs> is stopping practice to be on the phone. So then he gets off the phone, and he's like, sorry, guys. You know, that was, that was my good buddy, Donald Trump. He's just calling wish me luck this week. <laughs> That's worth taking so the call. He, he's talking to President Trump at practice. <laughs> yeah, he was president. Yeah, yeah. It was so funny. Um, so the, it's unfortunate he passes away mm-hmm. uh, that... Uh, Last December of 22. Okay, okay. And so that changes everything, right? As yeah, far as I mean, offense and everything that you're a part of. Right. And he, like, he was one of the sole reasons that I went there because, you know... Coaching changes in college football are essentially inevitable, like especially w- within the staff. I mean, the head coach may be somewhere for a while, but within the staff, those those rooms change every year. Um, and so I wanted to go somewhere where, like, I knew we were going to be doing this no matter what. You know, Coach Leach had done the same, run the same system for 30-plus years. Like, it wasn't changing no matter what coaches were in there. So that had a big uh, that had a big pull in the reason that I went there, along with the fact that it is Mike Leach. He's a legend of the game. I want to be around him. All those things. Um, so then, when he passed away, my hope was that everything would stay the same and we would just continue to do what we were doing. And then they kind of brought in some new some new staff. And and I mean, you know, I'm not knocking it. I mean, that's what they thought was best. And so I just, I mean, in my opinion, it, or in with talking with my family and all that, like it was in my best interest to kind of look elsewhere. And, um, you know, it was never my goal to leave Mississippi State. Uh, I did really like it there. Um, had built relationships there, all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, and then through my high school recruiting, I knew uh, I still had a good relationship with Coach Longo, who is mm-hmm. our offensive coordinator at Wisconsin. Um, and at this time, he had just taken the job. And we were trying to get the quarterback room, uh, just get the numbers filled, really, because they were losing a lot of guys. Um, and that became, you know, an opportunity for me and, um, you know, ultimately landed on my feet. So it was it was a good deal for me. What's uh, Coach Fickle like? He's intense. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is a phenomenal leader of, of men and um, does such a good job of, of grabbing hold of the team and getting, you know, the best out of guys, um, you know, he really um he really does a great job motivating and promoting competition and uh yeah i mean it's been going and playing for coach fickle has been you know one of the greatest things for me because it's just brought out so many good things um it's challenged me in so many ways um you know my i'm i'm in, i'm as strong as i've ever been i'm as fast as i've ever been i'm you know i'm as smart on the football field as i've ever been and uh you know can't say enough good things about coach fickle and his program Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about last year. Up and down, I would say you would probably say because it was very exciting for us down here. Uh, you're officially the backup quarterback to Mordecai. Mm-hmm. Mordecai yep. transfers from SMU. You're the backup. He gets injured. Yep. And uh, you did get to go in in one game, and you had one pass attempt for uh, what was it one yard or no eight yards? Yeah. Uh, against Georgia, Georgia Southern. Southern. Yeah, yeah, it's your first pass attempt, and. Uh, but then against Iowa, Mordecai goes down, and you got to step in. What's going through your mind uh, as you face uh, Iowa? This is Big Ten football. This is you ain't messing around anymore. Yeah, you know? no, I was. Uh, 
I this ain't in... North Garland anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, I was in oh shoot mode. There's no doubt. Um, you know, one of the biggest things in that game that like took me by surprise was like, I haven't been touched in nearly two years. And so I'm out there like feeling real grown men, like trying to take me to the ground and like, you know, I haven't had that physicality level of a game in almost two years. And yeah. so my body is like not used to it. Like, it's like, oh, they can actually hit me again. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not good. Mm-hmm. And so if you watch that game, like, I mean, I'm getting shellacked. <laughs> like, I'm taking hits like I've never been on a football field before. <laughs> like, I I pull one and run for like seven yards and just get molly by yeah. the corner. Like, yeah. it was it was bad. But other than that, like, there was a lot of good things that came from that game, just getting my feet wet in college football. I mean, kind of sucks that, like, my first stint playing is, like, against – arguably the best defense in the country. Always. They seem mm-hmm. to always have a good defense. Yeah, and so, I mean, that made it tough, of course. But um, You throw a pick. That's your only pick that mm-hmm. you had all last year. And and yeah. so that's good. That's one of those things mm-hmm. where you, obviously you can come back from from right. that one. You went 15-30 uh, for 122 yards in that one. You ended up losing that game 15-6. Uh, to six. Uh, But – it does have here. Your longest run was seven yards. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say the hit. It doesn't really describe hey, do the you hit. You have my the... longest run against Ohio State. <laughs> I do. Uh, Ohio State, twenty nine yards. Yeah. Twenty nine. Yeah, twenty nine so, yards for all the haters out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, let me see here. Let's go through. Uh, then you have Illinois. The game against Illinois, which was, I would say, the best one. Wouldn't you mm. say? You're. Your, uh, oh, I remember sure. watching that, getting it because we knew now you're going to start. Yeah. Uh, What's that whole week, week like? Of, yeah. God. Oh, man. Well, it was kind of nerve-wracking a little bit because, sure. I mean, you know, and at that point, like, our season was kind of uh, up in the air. I mean, we were 5-2, and two, and, uh, you know, we really needed to go there and win. Um, and it was really important to me that, like, you know, I could step in and get the job done, you know, and I wanted to prove that to our team. And um, so that week, you know, I felt the pressure of the game and um, – you know, but, I, you know, truthfully, like every week I, I prepared as if I was the starter. And so from a preparation standpoint, not a lot changed for me in the sense of like it wasn't like, oh, I'm watching more film this week than I've ever watched. Like I just continued to prepare every week the same way that I had previously. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we were able to go in there and, you know, it was a it was a crazy game. And we end up uh, we end up leaving there with the victory and. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the greatest memories. You have a fourth quarter comeback. Yeah, yeah, that's out. That was. I remember watching that. I, I know I was with somebody because I remember all of us just going nuts. I'm trying to remember who I was with, but you have to understand here, and I'm sure you know, uh, a lot of us get together when we knew you were going to be playing. Like, ah, let's all get together and watch Braden and all that. It was fun. It was yeah. a good time. Uh, that you were 21 of 41 for 240 yards in that game, two touchdowns. You have the fourth quarter comeback, um, and you're named. Uh, Big Ten Freshman of the Week after mm-hmm. that game. That's it's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I also that week, um, it just happened to work out that way. My dad was staying with me all week. Yeah. So yeah. like, it was kind of cool for my first start. Like every day, getting to come home and tell dad, like, you know, <laughs> this is what they're doing on third down. This is how we're gonna, you know, this is our plan for it. This is what we're doing in the red zone, and you know, just having him there kind of every step of the way. That's and that great. week was weird because, like, I'm having to do media. I'm meeting with the broadcasters of the game. Like, I'm getting to walk this whole walk as the starting quarterback, and I've never done it before. And um, it was pretty cool. What game was it that reminds me? I think it was when Rodney and Fran had come to watch you, I think, or something. They came to the Iowa game. The Iowa game. Yeah. Okay. Tell everybody about the end of that game and the press conference or lack of. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so. <laughs> That's funny. I guess most guys take a while to leave, but I mean, I was pretty beat up. Like, I mean, when that game ended, like we lost fifteen to six, and it was pretty brutal game for us on offense. Our quarterback broke his hand. You know, this new guy steps in who's never mm-hmm. played college football before, and like it was just a, it was kind of a rough, rough night. And so once like once everything is done, like coach is done talking, you've talked to your players and. You know, you met with your position coach, and, you know, you get changed, and I'm ready to go. Like, I'm like, I just want to, like, get away from football for, like, six hours, yeah. you know, or however long we had mm-hmm. off to we had to be back up there again. <laughs> uh, 
but no, I'm like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go and, and, and get the heck out of here. And plus like my family was there. Coach Webb was there with his wife. My girlfriend was there. Like I was ready to see my, my family and all that. And so I leave, we go out to eat. I get a call like 20 minutes into being there and they're like, Hey, like, where are you? I'm like, eating dinner. <laughs> they're like, so you left? I'm like, yeah, I left. And they're like, Oh, well, you know, we wanted you to do media. Like, <laughs> you got a few people looking for yeah, you. We wanted you to do the interviews or whatever. And they're probably like, and man, I'm he like, took it hard. Yeah. He just. <laughs> well, yeah, so this really didn't work to my advantage because now they put out this, like, there's this statement about, like, Braden Locke declined media availability, oh. which is not exactly true because I just didn't know. Right. I would have done it. You're I don't not care. used to people wanting to. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, I would have never said no. I would have just done it and moved yeah. on. But. <laughs> So now I, I'm getting all these like, you know, you're such a, you know, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to talk to the media. You're, you're you know, you're too scared. Good for that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so I'm getting called every name in the book for not talking to the media. But. <laughs> so, and that's something that you have to adjust. Sorry, Jay. The, well, I, I was just going to say it, the, the pressure of everything you do or don't do, you're kind of under scrutiny, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, that's why I like, I mean, you just got to. You got to stay in your own lane, and you got to do what you don't, don't listen believe to it. Is right. Don't read the comments. Yeah, it's not even so much like not listening to it or not reading it, but like, you know, in my opinion, like when you're on the inside every day with your teammates grinding away and, and trying to come together as one to accomplish one goal, you know, nothing it can be bigger than that. You know, like it, it, it's just real hard for me as a player to ever see anything outside of that because like naturally that that's what takes up all your time and energy is is trying to win games and trying mm -hmm. to get better as a team and it's like you know you can't you know it's hard to even find the time to soak up you know uh you know to soak up what you're getting you know placed in your comments or in your mm -hmm. messages like and and the thing is is like those people they they aren't there they don't right. know they're, what's going on yeah. they're all based on assumption they're based on what they see on tv or what they read on the internet like there's no one on the inside that actually, know, you know, is saying these things. So it's like, mean. why would it, why would it matter to you? You know, what matters is what your teammates think of you, what your coaches think of you. You know, what, how are you producing on the field? Because you know, that's what is most important. I always think of you guys who, who play college ball walking to class, maybe after a bad game, or or sitting in English class after a bad game. Billy knows I don't go, <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> that leads me to my other question: Is it true you don't really even have to go to class? <laughs> I will tell you, um, in the fall, I had one in-person class, which I did really? not go to. And this spring, I have two, and I, I do go to them. So. Okay. Unlike when I taught you in graphic design. I already knew everything. <laughs> yeah, he did. He sure, unbelievable. I already knew all those Pantones. Yeah, exactly. I, is Brayden? No, Brayden's not here. So you don't spend okay. a lot of time on campus, really? Um, well, I do because yeah. I'm constantly at the facility. But um, as far as like going to class, you know, I try to keep everything remote just because mm -hmm. it makes it easier. But yeah. Okay, uh, we got. I want to go back to one thing. We forgot to get one question in here because we talk about your running. We should have jumped this, put this in with your running ability. But we have a question from Caden Marshall, and it involves well track. And so let's see what. Oh man, I already know what he's going to ask. <laughs> All right, Brandon, so I'm out here tonight in front of the A&M track facility, and, you know, as a collegiate athlete, um, I think you should maybe pursue another sport, possibly, a dual sport athlete. Um, and, you know, maybe track might be a good one, so maybe could you reflect on your track experience maybe back to middle <laughs> school? I think that would be great for everyone here. So let's uh, – you obviously had a very successful middle school track experience. Very much so. So, <laughs> yeah, this is like an all-time story. Um so my dad and I, we go back. So I play football, seventh grade, you know, whatever. And that's when I kind of told you, like, the quarterback thing had kind of started getting serious. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was – felt like I, you know, I could spin the ball pretty well. I wanted to do it, you know. At that time, I was like, I want to be the quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. Like, that was, like, my lifelong thing when I was a kid. Um, but my dad was like, well, you got to run track. And I was like, why do I need to run track? Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, I don't even play a position that I have to run. Like, I just <laughs> well, have to move a little bit. Some do, but yeah, okay. No, he, <laughs> okay, let me say, some my run. dad My dad was definitely correct. <laughs> um, I was wrong. I play a position you don't have to run. <laughs> but no, I just, and the thing is, I was trying to find everything that I 
could to not have to do track. <laughs> well, of course, he's dead, so he wins that argument. Sure. Mm. So I'm running track. I hate it. Like, I, I hate it so much. I'm running every day. I'm so tired. I don't like running in general. Um, <laughs> I'm slower than, like, everyone there. Like, And I'm just, like, practicing. Like, I'm not ever going to make it to a meet. Like, they're never going to let me do a meet. So right. I'm just going in the morning to train for nothing. It's the dumbest thing I've ever. Well, in middle school, there's, like, there's a practice meet before all the real meets. Mm-hmm. And at the practice meet, it's like the preseason. Like, they let everybody play. Mm-hmm. So I got, you know. And for whatever reason, our track coach, whoever it was, thinks that I'm a good fit <laughs> For the 110 meter hurdles, <laughs> hurdles. <laughs> so all that week, I'm like, I'm like, all right, like I'm gonna do the hurdles. Like I suck, but okay. So uh, in practice, I was never fast, but like I'm getting over the hurdles. Like I'm, I'm going. Well, for whatever reason, apparently these hurdles have different levels yeah, to them. Right. We get out there for the seventh grade. Uh, practice meet and I'm walking past these hurdles and they're like right up here <laughs> All and the way I'm, up. I'm All like the... I have never cleared a hurdle this big <laughs> so I tell one of the coaching points that I did learn is you actually don't get penalized if you right. hit the hurdle you don't get penalized no. Like, so if you're not going to make it no. just step on the hurdle and push it down and mm-hmm. then keep running mm-hmm. well I'm like okay I'll do that, but, like, I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna make it. Like, yeah. it's just a hurdle. I can jump. <laughs> First one, we take off. The thing goes off. We take off. And I jump, like, as high, which was stupid. But I jump, like, as high as I can. Like, I got to make it over this hurdle that's so big. And as I'm coming down, my foot is, like, not to the ground yet. And it just goes right behind me. Because, you know, when you're hurdling, you want to maintain your running form mm-hmm. as you hurdle. Mm-hmm. Well, as my foot comes down, it doesn't hit the ground. So now I'm like face first, oh. right into the Wilkerson Sanders track. <laughs> Fall down. Everyone at this point is like three hurdles ahead of me. My friends cannot stop laughing. After, you know, and I told them, like, I don't want to do this. I hate track. Like, they know what's going on, they know how I feel about it. And then I'm going through the rest of the hurdles. I can't make it over. Like, I'm just stepping on each hurdle and running. Like, I'm hitting every single one. I get dead last. It is the most, like, uh, embarrassing sports humbling. moment. Yeah, humbling. humbling. Moment. Most embarrassing sports moment of my entire life. Like, I am so thankful that there is no video of this. because it <laughs> I was going to say, we have got to get that. Well, yeah. I have never seen a video Why of it. Why so. did you not? I would have faked an injury and just stayed there. Uh, yeah, I should. You should you gotta, good... Yeah, you just fake an injury and go, oh, man, I and the, twisted and so, my ankle. Uh, yeah, I continued to <laughs> practice, but there was no more meets for me. So as you're, as you're playing in that same stadium, winning game, did you ever look over and say, yeah, that's where I played it oh, they've, right there? Bro. They've hashed, they've brought it up a number yeah. of times. It never, yeah. That's, that's a funny. good one, though. I'm surprised he remembered that. Oh, that's yeah. funny. He even went over to the practice, <laughs> to the practice facility. Practice, yeah. I texted both him and Jack. I was like, man, I'm inspired by y'all's, you know, uh, intensity towards asking these questions. You're putting locations in on these yeah, questions. Yeah, Jack's in his garage. Uh, that's true. See, I thought Jack had gone to your house. I assumed your bike was at your house. Yeah, no, that's the good, that's the f- joke behind it. Yeah. <laughs> I just left it there. Yeah. Okay, let's go a little bit off and go. I just want to ask some personal stuff here. You know, mm-hmm. like who, who uh, if you could have a superpower, what would you pick? One superpower. I feel like the right answer would be super speed, right? <laughs> Thought that you may go there. Yeah. Or flying. 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 Flying is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, biggest fear. What scares you? What's something if somebody said this is going to happen? Or be I hate there? heights in roller coasters. Really? I will not get on them. Yeah. You never have you ever ridden a roller coaster? Like one, like a couple you of times, really? but like not often, oh. and like only like the like safer ones like the superman and six flags like no safer no. ones like the runaway mine train and stuff will you do that i don't even know what that <laughs> is. at six flags yeah no 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 uh, but like i'll do like a ride at the fair or like one ride but not the, the, like <laughs> no no nothing crazy though <laughs> well at the fair I, they have that crazy mouse you know that one where it spins and goes around yeah yeah, yeah. i i absolutely hate heights though okay like, huge fear <laughs> uh, like to the point of like if you're in a building really high does that bother you um no i just don't look down okay so mm, but okay. you know have you seen in chicago where they have the 
the thing where you can walk out. Yeah. Me and Cash have done it. We Cash lived That's it. That's what yeah. I was going to ask. I figured oh. you had done it. That, I'm not doing that. We got a bunch of photos of us standing there. I will never there. do that. Because you're standing because over Because you the walk roads. out and it's just glass. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. That glass is coming down at some point. At the Hancock building in Chicago, you get in this thing and it's a glass thing and you have these handlebars and you're kind of like, why they got handlebars? Well, they send it out about maybe 10 feet and then tilt it. And then you're just tilted and you're laying over the, the street and you're no, that's you not know, for me. way up there. Yeah. yeah. 110 stories or something like that. Yeah. So oh, I don't know. So that's a big deal. What is your biggest fear? Uh, I've been shit before clowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot handle clowns. If a clown walked in here right now, I would just lose it. Everything would be evacuated. Yeah. Uh, no, it would be it ain't that bad. But I just don't understand why a man would put all that on his face and and be that creepy. I agree. It, it, it is creepy. It's very creepy. I mean, uh, what, what was yours like? I'm going to go with Mike Ritland's answer, which I liked last week. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Which I know is not true. So He's got to be scared of yeah. something. Yeah. No, I'm saying you. You got to be scared of something. That uh, that's my answer. Nothing. Nothing. That's my okay. Right. Uh, no. Okay. You're afraid of getting that question. Maybe that's your biggest fear. Probably is getting so. these fear question. <laughs> He's still inspired by the Navy Seal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. And it's so cool that you showed up after the Navy Seal. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I really appreciate you guys. You know, you have a Navy Seal on, and then your next choice is me. That worked out. A guy well. that can't run. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> The Navy SEAL's doing everything, and Braden's like, I couldn't do a hurdle. Yeah, you know? and I've got a box of hair products inside <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's what y'all gave him last week. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about your, your workouts. Uh, as far as compared to high school to now, the staff that helps you, uh, mm -hmm. nutrition, all that kind of right. stuff. What's expected of you, and what are your workouts like? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's really high intensity. Um, as far as what's expected of you, I mean, you just expected to, to give them your all and compete in everything that you do. That's one of the core principles of our program is to, you know, promote competition and to, uh, you know, give your best effort. I mean, it, it gets the term gets thrown around, but, it you know, you are always in control of your effort and your attitude and, uh, you know, it doesn't change when you get to the college level or when you get to the pro level or anything like that. So, um do you have more like one-on-one -on -one training right now? Or? Uh, a little bit. So I mean, like when you get to college, like there's a little bit more uh, position-specific training. So the O-line's not going to train the same way as the quarterback, and the, and the safeties aren't going to train the same way as the uh, the linebackers. You know, so um, you know you do a little bit more specific. You know, our strength staff does a really, really good job of being uh, very hands-on with each player. Um, and there's a very good understanding of like where each guy is and where what direction they need to go in. You know, maybe you need to gain weight, maybe you need to lose weight, maybe you need to maintain, or you need to get faster. Or, you know, you need to be more explosive. Like, there's all kinds of stuff, and and every athlete is so different. Um, and I think that our strength staff has such a good handle on where everybody is, where they need to go. And, you know, one thing that gets overlooked is, like, you know, we all see, we all know those guys that, like, oh, that guy, he's super, super strong, but he's just not a very good football player. But, like, our staff promotes, like, you know, it. what matters the most is how good are you on the field. Like, it doesn't matter if you can squat 500 pounds. Like, it does, but, like, mm -hmm. that's not going to win us a game, you know. So, um, you know, truly making you a better product on the field is their sole purpose. And then from a nutrition standpoint – um, you know, we have a nutritionist there um, who, you know, provides us with meals and, um, you know, money to spend at different restaurants. Um, you know, we have we can do all of the one on one training that we want with her or like meeting time with her. Mm. Um, you know, they give us vitamins. They really they really take care of us in a lot of ways. So. Mm -hmm. There's no shortage of uh, food or anything like that up there. And knowledge and yeah. right, yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing is like, you know, learning <clears throat> what you're putting in your body. Like I've always had a big um, interest in it, and so you know, mm -hmm. for me, it's been awesome to kind of have all of these things at my disposal. You know, and, and you know, the greatest part is it's all free right now. That's cool. So you could just, as a player, like you have to just take advantage of it as much as you can. You know, and then truly, you know, buy into what we're doing. I was talking to uh, Jacory Shepard about that when he was playing NFL, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, it must be high in nutrition supplements. 
He's like, I just went to McDonald's every day. Like, Some guys hey, can do that. Do? Yeah. <laughs> well, who was it? Uh, the, the running back for the Seahawks and then uh, uh, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, Marshawn Lynch. Skittles before every Skittles. Game. He eats Skittles. <laughs> That's his <laughs> thing. Yeah. And there's another player that eats McDonald's all the time. I can't oh, remember who. Chad it is. Johnson. Ocho Cinco. Oh, is it really? Well, maybe there's he something swears, to it. He swears by McDonald's. And he's a fit guy. I mean, he's yeah. You know, it's, well, uh, well, not he didn't play anymore, but, but, but when he did. <laughs> Not everybody's made up of the same genetics. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have you're at uh, Madison, Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go out on a limb and say Madison is not like Rockwall. No, it's not. What is uh, mm-hmm. what, what's the biggest uh, adjustment you've had to make there? Other than I know it's going to be cold. Well, and I was going to say you got to learn how to drive on ice. Right, right. Mm. You also have to learn that. <laughs> They're not canceling school for anything. <laughs> you know, around here, if it gets in the forecast, right. we're done. Yeah, you yeah. Know, we're not yeah, going. They canceled two nights before. Yeah. Right. That's, we're proactive. It's Friday <laughs> of the week before. Well, school's out through Wednesday. We're good. Right. That's not the case. Yeah. You know, it'll be below freezing, snowing, and you're out there walking to class. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> and that's why I tell you all, I just, I don't go. Yeah. You know, why Why would I stress <laughs> why myself class? out? Anyways, what's but your major? Personal finance. Okay. Oh, there you go. That's a good so, one. Yeah. If things work out the way we want them to work out, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, it, I know it's so. Yeah. Um, I would say that the the people are a lot different. There's yeah. A, the demographic is completely different. How? Um, well, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a college town, but it's a uh, it's considered like a public ivy mm-hmm. so all of the like foreign exchange students that don't get into Yale and Harvard they go to Wisconsin mm-hmm. because they're you know there's a lot of uh, you know Asian people a lot of Chinese people you know mm-hmm. you know more than like you'd ever see in Rockwall you know to compare it you know it's a lot different um, but yeah I mean the, the I would say the demographic is different and then the weather obviously yeah. politics are a little different. Okay, so in Madison, yes, uh-huh. but the state of Wisconsin, no. That's what I was going to ask you because yeah. I, from people so, I've known, so Madison is very, you know, a liberal town, right? But right. the state is not. I like if you. you met, it's like, like Austin in Texas, exactly. Yeah, that me and Jack talk all the time, and it's like that's exact. Like his city is exactly like mine, and yeah. our states yeah. do and not. Mostly, align. it is college towns that'll go pretty. There's liberal. a little, yeah, mm-hmm. and in my opinion, like and you kind of have to there's liberal in every college town yeah. if you look for it like it's are sure. you seeing that in your classes you know that everybody's talking about indoctrination these days are you so every class that i've been in the one yeah which is without, like what, what we've two, figured out maybe a three even my on, gone okay to. okay well let me back up because even my online classes where you have to introduce yourself or whatever it is uh introduce your name your pronouns Oh my gosh! And really? your major, oh. excuse me, your preferred pronouns. Yeah. So even wow. if you are a he, but you want to be called she. Yeah. Anybody say it? Um, I think we've gotten some they them's. They them's, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, so. That threw me because not only I remember when I was teaching, and they said I want to like, go by they plural. them exactly. Uh, if you're going to change it, fine, but let's stay within the singular world and not plural. <laughs> you're not multiple. I mean, you're, you're already making me change it. When I see a man and I got to say you're a woman, you're already screwing with my mind. Uh-huh. Much less, oh, and you have to go plural too. Yeah, it's like so, no. Uh-uh. I ain't, uh, that is, that. you know, I, I can't say I've ever been asked my pronouns before going no, up there. No, you're right. You're right. Huh. Um, okay, the one of the coolest things at. Camp Randall is the stadium. Is the they call it the jump around? What is it? The it's just called jump around. Jump yeah. around. First time you experienced that. What was that like? And and, and for those that don't know, explain yeah. what it is. So at the beginning of the fourth quarter, before the fourth quarter starts, um, they play jump around, and the fans just explode. I mean, it's a it's a long time tradition at Wisconsin that they do every single home game. And uh, yeah, I mean the place goes nuts. You can literally see the stadium like. That's what I was getting to. Oh, it's wow. but it's it's really really cool, um, and it's something that like. If you're at the game, you see it, but like if you're on the field, you really feel like the energy, and you feel like the the shaking feeling of the stadium. Like it's, That's I've never cool. seen anything like it. But oh. uh, yeah, they love it, and and the unique part is like everybody shows up for jump around. And then they all leave. Like, it's uh, it's <laughs> funny the, how fast it clears out oh, after jumping funny. around. Uh, um, but yeah, it's it's really really cool. One thing I've given you a hard time about all the years is your lack of quality movies that you've watched. Oh, here we go. 
I will say right. Shawshank. All right, you have watched yeah. Shawshank. I mean, all time. Uh, you have it number one. Yeah, number right. one. You do Shawshank and Dark Knight. They're up. Okay, all right. I can go with that. Dark Knight's pretty good. I'm not a superhero Dark Knight guy. was like my time too. Yeah, so, you're you know right. What I mean? You're so, right. Yeah. It was in your wheelhouse. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Have you watched Jaws yet? No. <sighs> I mean, these are classic. Have you they watched had... The Godfather? I need to watch The Godfather. Yes. I've, I've been wanting to watch The Godfather. You I haven't seen, seen The Godfather? I've never seen it. See, Dude, I have it memorized almost. It was on today, and I had it on. Oh, really? You know, we, have a, we, you know we have a restaurant in Madison, and the owner, he cooks for the cast of The Godfather. Really? That's cool. This, really? Yeah. Man, and you haven't watched it. You've disrespected him. That's a big thing in he The Godfather is disrespect. He doesn't know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a big thing. Um, but, yeah, we've always gotten on to you. I'm glad that you've done Shawshank. That was unbelievable. Yeah, that yeah, is that's great a great movie. Great one. Okay, so we, that's another thing that this is going to be, you know, some of the off-season here. you do here. TV shows? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been watching Breaking Bad. Okay, all right. You oh, like yeah. it? Awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, it's really good. good show. I, I've... It's so long, like as far as the seasons, I've been overwhelmed. Like I've watched the first season, and then I'm like, ah, we got like what ten more seasons to go. There's I can't five. do all of them. Is there only five? There's I thought it was five. more. Yeah, you gotta watch it, man. Have y'all watched Walking Dead? I haven't watched. My five. son does. I don't. It's good. It's not about the zombies. It's about the way people behave. Yeah. And what would happen when shit hits the fan? Yeah. And there's no more civilization and. Huh. That's what it, the whole story is about. Okay. To, to really get into the way because you know, Cash really liked it, and but he likes oh, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. You know, I did watch the menu. Have you seen the menu? It's oh, a movie where they. Yeah, he's, he's there to kill them all. Well, well, uh, you oh, know. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> that's what happened. Well alert. That is a unique storyline. Right, so now people don't need to watch the menu. <laughs> it, it's pretty early on. You figure out that's you figure what's out that gonna... there's something wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's true. Yeah, and so uh, and in Sixth Sense, uh, the Bruce Willis is dead. Oh. If, we're just go ahead and spoil every movie, and and since Jay's already started it, uh, but uh, okay. So I feel better. But you need to watch The Godfather and Jaws. Those are like you know yeah, they're staples. good mob movies. Goodfellas. Oh, yeah, I need to watch that. Good. Oh, yeah. Mob movies I Donnie love. Donnie Brasco is good. Yes, it is. You've seen that. All right. Yes. All right. And then uh, even like Black Mass. I think it's called Black Mass. It's the one about Whitey Bulger in Boston in the uh, 80s and 90s. It's really good. Mm. That's another mob one. Um, okay. What is something that you believe that a lot of people don't believe? Like, what's something that you've always tried to convince? Like, no, this is really happening or this is what I, you know, I think is going on. Um, man, that's it. I wish y'all would have told me. I that know. Beforehand. I should have told you ahead of time. <laughs> no, we can come good. back. You're good. Um, this is gonna sound bad, but I don't believe that you need to use toothpaste every single day. Okay. Because expand on that, please. Okay, so you use it the one time. Monday or whatever. <laughs> Wait, this is coming from a guy who has a twice a day hair regimen. Right? <laughs> I brush my I brush my teeth. I brush my teeth the recommended amount. Uh -huh. I don't have cavities, so okay, I'm good. But I think that we should just like have like some sort of like clean, like I mean not floss, but like you know something to get just the parts out because you don't need the toothpaste every day. Like I, I kind of see where you're going with this. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's kind of overdone. Okay. I've always said that. But it makes you feel good with the fresh breath. Yeah. Because when I brush without toothpaste... You ever, you ever have Altoids? Like, well, I know, but that's another step. We could do it all in one. Yeah. That's I great. mean, you're one of those guys that for peanut butter and jelly, you want it all in the same jar. You don't want to open up multiple jars or something. You so you're saying want... potentially brush without... Do the brush, but no... But just do the do the toothpaste like twice a week. But at at that point, what's what's it take to just put a little? Right. <laughs> just go. But then you got to have all the water and you, like <laughs> that's the best part of it. It's the fresh breath. Um, you ask me what I believe. <laughs> okay, right. okay, you're right. We, we shouldn't have challenged you. We, we should have let that go. That's right. That's right. That's this right. is a this is a safe space. I'm sure you've heard that a lot in Madison. Safe space. Yeah. <laughs> Mental health. That's uh, yeah, a big right. one in exactly. Madison. <laughs> oh man. Um, if you didn't play football, like I know that your goal is uh, hopefully, you know, excel here in college, mm -hmm. possibly go to the pros, what would you want to do? Um, and don't uh, say graphic design because I know you would not succeed there. No doubt. Okay. Not a star um, student. No. Mm -hmm. No, I would, I would probably take up golf. Okay. I really like golf. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, much easier on the body. Uh -huh. um, As Tiger, but okay. Yeah. But Tiger's got injuries from other stuff. Yeah, man. yeah, that's like, true. He's been in um, car wrecks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Probably golf, 
you know, I really liked baseball for a while. Uh-huh. Not really practice, but I liked the game. Um, but like a career, like a it, career, you could do a career something golf, that I mean, pays. Yeah, oh, something okay, that, yeah. yeah. I would get into like some sort of sales job. Really, I, I like this is like my like environment. Like I like being in front of people. I like talking. I like yeah, mm-hmm. you know, presenting. Like you know. I don't want to just be sitting in front of a computer screen all day, like typing away. Like us. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that dagger. Sorry. Yeah. Guys. But no, like probably something with a little bit of travel involved. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. But yeah, right. that would be. Makes me want to shut the computer down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would probably be, um, that would probably suit me well though. Okay. All right. Uh, that makes sense. And, that know, makes some, sense. My job, I would want to wear a suit every day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, that's what I was aspiring for when I was a kid. <laughs> the, the traveling salesman right there. That is so great. So, okay, like you would do sales. You like talking mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff. Uh, that leads me to this. This is something we've always given you a hard time about, too. I'm just getting to all the high points. Uh, we always joked around that you felt, it seems like you're always more comfortable with adults than people your age. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> like for a, sure. An old soul? Is that, yeah. An old soul is a good yeah, way yeah. to describe it. We, yeah. I'll never forget... We are at the Rockwall Keith basketball game, and it, we're all sitting around. It's me and Coach Webb and Trey, and I think your dad, I think other, other Trey, uh, and a couple other people. And, and you'd come with your dad, I think. And uh, he's uh, Lan- or uh, Braden sits down with us. Now, at Rockwall Keith basketball. There's a lot the of student students. sections are going nuts. They're full. And this is when you're like a sophomore, I think. You had just finished that first season or whatever as uh-huh. a quarterback, and so. You sit down with us for a little bit, and finally we're like, hey, you know, you got to go to the student section. And you were like, ah, I don't, and I'm like, come on, man. You go. So finally you go, and you're not gone two minutes, and you're back, and you sit down with us again. We're like, what are you doing? We're just talking adult stuff. Oh, I like that, you know? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I was like, really, we're going to talk fertilizer. We're going to talk about, you know, insurance, insurance like in a... interest rates. What do you want to talk about then? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I – it. Yeah, I've, everybody says that too. Like, I just kind of gravitate towards adult conversations. <laughs> I remember we uh, we would hang out with the Marshalls, my family, right, right, and they would all be like downstairs talking, and we're supposed to be upstairs <laughs> doing whatever. And here I come down the stairs, and Coach Marshall, he would get he got so used to me doing, and he'd be like, "No, no, this is <laughs> go. This is where the adults. And... <laughs> this is where the adults are talking." <laughs> now let me ask you, kind of talking money and career. What's your thought on uh, college players now being able to get paid? Um, I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's done a lot of good for the game in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I think that you know if you excel on the field and you do things, you know, at a really high level, and you know, like you think about like the Johnny Manziel's, like he was making a ton of money for A and M and not being mm-hmm. able to reap anything of it. So that kind of was what led him to his troubles a little bit, exactly. Yeah, and right. you would never would have had problems like that before. Right. But mm-hmm. um, no, I, I I think there's a lot of good to it. Um, I think that it's been taken out of context in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. um, just because now like you've got high school kids talking about they're only going to go to the school that's going to pay right. them the most money. Mm. Uh, it results in a lot of broken promises. It takes away from the value of the sport. I think that, like, you know, as a player, you know, it it, it creates this uh, creates this culture of like, well, if I do things really, really well, then this game's going to owe me, and these coaches are going to owe me, mm. and they have to depend on me. When really, the beauty of our sport and the the greatness of college football is that you have all these guys that come together and play as if they owe the game. You know, like they, you know, this game requires your respect. It requires your work ethic. It requires your character. It requires your habits off the field. Um, And so I think that that has been pushed aside so much. And now all we think about is dollar signs. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's driven so many people out of the game. I think Coach Saban retired because mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. I think had Coach Leach stayed alive that he wouldn't have lasted long mm-hmm. in this, uh, in this environment. Um, and I think there's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of people that walk away from college football because of things like this. And I think that you see a lot of people now trying to get uh, NFL jobs because the college game is so flawed. Mm-hmm. Um I, I, I feel like college football is more professional than the NFL at times now with all this because at least the NFL has rules to a degree. It's like the Wild West in college now with I the know, NIL. And there's no guidelines. And it used to be the opposite when the NCAA could have rules. Right. And so, like, I mean, just think about this. The month of December, 
you have coaches getting fired and hired. Mm -hmm. You have the transfer portal opening up. So you have players leaving your team. You have players coming in on your team. You have high school signing day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have bowl prep, Mm -hmm. which is like we have to go play a game. So you have all of these things on your plate that are all going on at the same time. The season's there still are, going. There are, yeah, the season is still going. There right. are high school kids that are trying to sign that don't know who the coach is going to be and don't know who's going to be on their team mm-hmm. when they get there. Yeah. It's it's such a flawed system, in my opinion. You look at the NFL, and they've got the draft is in April. The mm-hmm. free signing is during this time. Mm-hmm. The season is during this time. Uh, there's a season for coaches getting hired. Like, mm-hmm. Everything is very, very structured, and you can't – it's not all intertwined like it is in college. And even to the point – somebody made a great point I saw somewhere about there's no other sport that the free agents are leaving or arriving while the season's going on, and that's what happens in exactly. college football. Like in baseball, like if all of a sudden, you know, for the Rangers, Corey Seager decides, I'm leaving, and he leaves like in, in August – you know, be like, no, yeah. it's a season. We still have the season. Well, and he's finish. binded by contract. Right, exactly, you know? like, exactly. Yeah, but if he was a free agent or anybody was a free agent, and they could just leave, and that, and this is where I, I feel like that college football has gotten to the point of okay, we've heard y'all players should get money for what they've contributed, mm-hmm. and they just went from one extreme to the other, mm-hmm. and they didn't, they didn't ease into it. The football playoff, which I'm all on board with, I think that's going to throw a wrench into a lot of these things too, because mm-hmm. then you have. Talk about this. What do you what do you think about players that if they're not in the playoff, they just opt out. They just opt out and don't play in the bowl game. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people because I like it really screws a lot of teams because you've had this good season and like you know even if you're not in the playoff, going ten and two or going nine and three, mm-hmm. that's a very successful season. Like it's hard to win nine games in college football or hard to win ten games. And so you run into this problem of like, well, we've got this ten and two team, and we got to go play a really good team, but we don't have any players. Mm-mm, like mm-mm. we've got, mm. we've lost, you know, eighty percent of our production on all. Well, A and M bailed out of a game because they lost so many players a couple of years ago. It was, you know, what's you're going to see it continue me because A and M does have the twelfth man. That's what they brag about. But apparently, the twelfth man, out of yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, but no, I, I agree, and I think this is now getting to a point that we're at a crisis. Uh, level I think now for college football and there, a lot of people love it because of the uh, uh, purity of it mm-hmm. and the purity is leaving it's, yeah uh, yeah I and, completely and, agree is uh, something going to change do you think I think eventually but I think it's you know not to go back to this odd opinion that Braden has but I think the toothpaste is out of the tube right now for a little bit of some of, some of this it's <laughs> a good way to put it <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I because you you can't go back now and say all these kids that are making money okay you can't make money anymore you got to let them continue it's going to cause a, a big ripple I think mm-hmm. So we got to kind of, but there's somebody does need to come in and say, okay, here's the time. Make like, some sense. We just need to put regulations yeah, and yeah, structure yeah. around it. I mean, like you said, it's the Wild West right now. You're like, starting to get unions now with players. Players are organizing and creating unions. You yeah, know, and for, it and, really, like, it's created so wow. much, you know, disloyalty in, mm-hmm. in the game. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody looks out for anyone except their self, which understandably so, but, like, you know, a pl- the players are always only looking out for the players, and the coaches are only looking out for their, themselves, like Which, in their family. I would guess that's very much probably been the case in the NFL, but never in the co- at that college level. It's well, like but there's yeah. contracts in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, is it's so money. It's structured in the right. NFL. But the thing is, too, like, okay, you have a kid that's coming, like when they have the signing day. It's always exciting. If you if you root for a school, you went to a school, you want to see who they signed. My mo- whole mindset when I see my school and who they signed, my first thought is. Better half these guys are gone in a year uh, yeah. because mm. if they don't get what they want, they're gone. I would be mm-hmm. curious to look at my signing class at Mississippi State and just see like how many of these guys are still here and how many of these guys right. are. And, and you I'm, transferred based only on it wasn't money or anything. It was because of the coaching change. Yeah, it was, a, and, it was and, the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. And, a, and a death. I mean, my goodness. And so, mm-hmm. but, it, it, you know, now you look at these. If you go and sign two really good players at the same position, one of them's going to leave because they're not going to be happy about their playing time. Wouldn't you agree? I do, and I, I think like it's, you know, we put it's really really hard for these coaches right now because not only are they trying to recruit guys to come play on their team, then you have to recruit them to stay on your team. Right. You have to continue to recruit new players, and now like some coaches have to decide like how much they're going to pay yes. each guy. Like God. these these coaches aren't. No, they're for HR. Like, mm-mm. they're not going to decide who should get what. Like, no. that's mm-mm. not their job. It's they're trying job. to win games. And it's like, 
even in the NFL, like we're not asking uh, Mike McCarthy to decide how much to pay the tight right. ends. Like, <laughs> right, right. He would never do that. No. He's only in charge of the schematic issues on the field. Right. Like, yeah. I think it's it's ironic. The whole thing is everything that SMU did that destroyed their football team. <laughs> to this day, it's still affecting it. Would totally be legal. Now. Legal now, yeah. Mm-hmm. Other than the school paid them. And now the schools, I mean, it's it's supposed to be outside uh, people paying. Yeah. Okay. And so the school did pay them. It was coming from the school. Straight from the school. Uh, but if it was legal, they I'm sure they would have at that time said, okay, let's go get, you know, Huffines or whoever, a, yeah. the dealership yeah, they or whoever, let yeah. them pay. Well, and everybody's got team collectives. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so yeah. but I agree with you. I think that, that a lot of these things, that were, well, gambling too. That's the other thing I was going to say about you get all this criticism. A lot of people are probably mad if you missed a pass or you didn't get that touchdown because they had money on the game. There's no uh, doubt. Yeah, there's a ton of money. Cir- and and circulating you see people get livid. And yeah. And we're talking even blowouts. If the team was favored by 35, but they only won by 32 and they took a knee instead of taking the, the field goal or whatever, mm-hmm. there's people mad, mm-hmm. you know, because they had money riding on that. And and, and these yeah. are things that we used to avoid mm-hmm. because it would hurt the game. And now it's embraced. Now we got pro teams in Las Vegas. You know, and so we're embracing yeah, and I'll it. I'll tell you, like the the whole sports wagering thing is so is in such high demand right now that like we have to complete a sports wagering training wow. as a student athlete. Wow, you know, to just inform us on what's wow. legal and illegal because unbelievable. You know, people are so into it. Sure, and you used to have the other thing before. With the boosters, they couldn't contact you at this time. You couldn't go with a booster here. Mm-hmm. They couldn't pay for your dinner and all these things. I'm assuming that's pretty much out the window now, isn't it? Is that, I mean, is there still rules with that or not? Yeah, I mean, the boosters can be as involved. Like, it just can't, like, the school can't provide you with NIL deals, but, like, Mm -hmm. the boosters and, I mean, like, we see it all over the place. Mm -hmm. And then one final thing, we'll let you go because we both got a baseball game to get to. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke is transferring, to speaking of transferring, from Miami. It looked like at the end of the year with Mordecai, leaving and graduating that you were probably going to be the starter you still can be the starter i'm assuming right but now you got some competition because of a transfer he's a pretty talented guy from mm-hmm. miami what are your thoughts on that with him coming over yeah i mean i think like you know coach we uh we lost a quarterback to the portal and uh you know that kind of puts us in a position to to get to take one and um so i mean coach went out and got the best one that mm-hmm. they could get and uh you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock them for doing that. Like they want to promote competition within the room, mm-hmm. and and I, I'm a big believer that like competition brings out the best in everybody, um, and it'll bring out the best in me, and it'll bring out the best in him, and and then you know collectively it'll make our team better. Um, and so you know it's just gonna be, it's gonna come down to, you know, does the team play better when I'm in, or does the team play better when he's in, and. Uh, that's the guy that should play. I mean, it it's pretty simple uh, formula as far as that goes. But, yeah, I mean, I'm never going to, you know, expect anything to be handed to me or anything like that. I mean, it's it's big-time college football. You know, it, you have to be able to beat out somebody. You have mm-hmm. to be able to go earn the job. And, and, you know, it's not supposed to be easy. That's why you choose this, you yeah. know, avenue. That's a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, you got anything else, Jay? I don't think so. Man, this was good. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you guys. We're going to go watch fun. you uh, ride a bike right now. Yeah, so we we'll, got a bike set up. You we'll don't know this, but back. we've already contacted <laughs> Yeah, Jack's on his way. Yeah, Your we got, bike is here, and the chain is on it. Yeah, the chain's on it. <laughs> Schwinn, a Schwinn representative is outside. and so <laughs> better put them training wheels on. <laughs> All of a sudden, you're backing off the, oh, I could ride it. Now it's down to. <laughs> i got to call Coach and tell him about my broken leg. Speaking of, Schwinn could be a great sponsor. Right. Speaking there of, you so go. There you go. There you go. Well, dude, this was outstanding. We appreciate you. I appreciate yeah, you guys. It's yeah. awesome, man. Can't wait to watch you next year, and uh, we're going to make our way up there at some point. I wanted to go last year, couldn't make yeah. it, but uh, I want to come up there and let me know. Let you, yeah, uh, yeah you let you show us what you can do up there. This has always been fun. It's been great ever since. Do you remember the first? I'll tell you real quick, and when we go out, I remember the first time I met Brayden. Do you remember the first time we met? I don't actually know. I do <laughs> remember. Obviously... I would always come in the classroom, things like that, but I don't remember the first time we met. The first time we met was at uh, Seven on Seven in College Station. <laughs> it was your. It, your, it was your. It was going to be a sophomore. It was going to be your sophomore, and you were leading the. You were the quarterback for the Seven on Seven team. I had not met you. I had not met Braden yet. I get there. I'm standing there, and I'm. I think I'm with Frank, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah, Jack so. is there. And the first thing Braden does is basically tell me. 
I want to play you in cornhole and we're going to beat you. And that was the first thing. <laughs> you knew he was competitive because there was some cornhole talk going yeah. back and forth. That was and, when me and Coach Webb used to go back and forth. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And all of a sudden, the first, I'm like, hey, Braden, hey, when we play cornhole, we're taking you down. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you well, were, this freshman's your, coming at me. Your boy, Coach Webb, helped you with that one. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He loaded the gun. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He's always doing that stuff. So anyway, I thought that was funny. The first thing, I got a freshman challenging me. <laughs> you know, and if, if, if you you challenged me to a bike race, I'd have been all in. Because oh, I know yeah. I now could have beaten him. That's right. You know, that is true. Yeah. Is so, true. anyway, dude, this is great. Congratulations on everything. Thanks. Yes. I know there's more to go. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see y'all next time.